एवरीबडी वेलकम टू क्लास माय नेम इज विशाल सिंह एंड आई विल बी टेकिंग योर हिस्ट्री पोर्शन फॉर दिस पीएमपी ठीक है अच्छा नाउ इन टुडेज क्लास विल बी स्टार्टिंग विद एंशियंट हिस्ट्री राइट now today we have to cover the stone age the harappans and the vedic age now when it comes to ancient history let us get an idea ki aur kya kya cheeze hain first of all we have the stone ages that is the prehistoric portion of indian history the harappan civilization that is the proto historic portion the vedic age which can be divided into two portions the early and the later vedic ages followed by the post vedic period or the mahajanpad period it is also known as the buddha age right this was the period when buddhism and jainism emerged this was followed by the mauryan age roughly from the 3rd to the 2nd century bc the mauryan period was followed by almost 4 centuries of post mauryan age right 2nd century bc to roughly the 3rd century ce ad theek hai here there were a number of foreign ruling groups who established their control over northern portion of india and in the rest of india there were a number of other dynasties which established their control as mughal rule disintegrated then we have the gupta period from the 3rd to the 5th century bc uh, ad and the post gupta period right from the 6th to the 8th century b ad then from the 8th to the 12th century the period of history is a transition of indian history it is known as the early medieval age followed by the establishment of turkish rule in the form of the delhi sultanate the delhi sultanate at its peak of territorial extent extended over both north as well as south india during the reign of mohammed bin tughlaq but as the sultanate's rule over south india disintegrated a number of regional principalities regional kingdoms emerged two most important ones in this regard the vijayanagar and the bahmani kingdoms right then some very powerful cultural and religious trends were also contemporary to this period of the sultanate vijayanagar and bahmani known as the bhakti and the sufi movements and after we have covered all of these we are going to look at the mughal history right now this is briefly an overview right, of the different topics that we have to cover itna clear hai na now what are the different themes that we will seek to tackle while going through this entire period first of all we have to take a look at the evolution 
of humans during the prehistoric age the environmental and technological developments the economic conditions of the various periods that is the material culture and after the establishment of a state society we are going to look at the political uh, aspects of uh, history such as administration revenue further we are also going to investigate themes such as the nature of the society religion philosophy and while doing this we will also keep one eye on the artistic and cultural developments okay now usually you will find that in most coaching institutes art and culture is treated as a completely different subject we are not going to do that over here because according to me that is a big mistake until and unless you have a complete idea of how artistic and cultural developments are rooted in particular periods of the past you will not be able to get a complete picture of such developments that is why we are going to look at most of these developments simultaneously obviously there are going to be a few outliers which we will not be able to cover in our regular flow and for that we will cover them separately okay for example things such as dance painting etc we may be able to cover later on okay so this is a brief overview of the timeline and the themes of history in ancient and medieval art and culture that we will be covering the first thing the first topic that we will be covering is the stone ages right now before we talk about the stone ages let me tell you that our past can be divided into three distinct historical phases on the basis of the evidence that is available to study it these are prehistory protohistory and the historical phase what is the difference between each of these kya hai batao bataiye for prehistory we do not have any written material available to us okay therefore the archaeologists have to depend only and only upon archaeological sources okay proto history is that part of our past where human beings had script they left behind written material but we do not have the means to understand it we do we have not deciphered that script yet theek hai and historical phase for which both archaeological as well as literary evidence is present it is available for us to study theek hai acha now where are you going to put the stone ages are you going to characterize it as prehistory proto history or historical phase kya hoga ye prehistory why because during this period this was the very formative stage of human society human beings were still learning to communicate with each other even language had not appeared fully and therefore it would be unrealistic for us to expect them to have left behind written material theek hai therefore we depend only and only upon which kind of sources archaeological sources 
वॉट आर आर्क्योलॉजिकल सोर्सेज दो सोर्सेज विच आर अवेलेबल थ्रू अस टू अस थ्रू एक्सप्लोरेशन एंड एक्सकवेशन आर्क्योलॉजिकल सोर्सेज आर द फिजिकल रिमेन्स ऑफ द पास्ट ठीक है अच्छा ना The Stone Age covers the earliest phase of human life. It can be categorized as the prehistoric past during which humans evolved from primates in Central Africa and spread to the other parts of the world. Now, in the entire chain of human evolution, we evolved from primates. Primates are considered to be the common ancestors of human beings as well as other apes such as orangutans, chimps, etc. ठीक है? अच्छा दिस प्रोसेस हैपेंड वेयर इन सेंट्रल अफ्रीका एंड फ्रॉम देयर ह्यूमन बीइंग्स हु हैड द एबिलिटी टू वॉक ऑन टू फीट माइग्रेटेड टू अदर पार्ट्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड दिस प्रोसेस बिगन रफली टू मिलियन इयर्स अगो एंड इज कैटेगराइज्ड बाय मैन इन हिज प्रिमिटिव फॉर्म बिफोर द कांसेप्ट ऑफ सिविलाइजेशन इमर्ज्ड व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ सिविलाइजेशन व्हाट इज व्हाट आर द डिफाइनिंग कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ सिविलाइजेशन क्या होता है एडवांस कल्चर नहीं हाउ डू यू क्वांटिफाई दैट एडवांसमेंट क्या होता है नॉट ओनली दैट द फर्स्ट बेसिक रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ एवरी सिविलाइजेशन इज द प्रेजेंस ऑफ अ स्क्रिप्ट दैट दे शुड हैव द एबिलिटी टू रिकॉर्ड देयर थॉट टू रिकॉर्ड द इवेंट्स दैट आर टेकिंग प्लेस इन द फॉर्म ऑफ रिटर्न मटीरियल ठीक है तो यहां पर स्क्रिप्ट था नहीं था तो यहां पे सिविलाइजेशन था नहीं था देन ऑल सिविलाइजेशन ऑल्सो हैव एन अदर कैरेक्टरिस्टिक दैट दे आर साइंटिफिकली एंड मटीरियली एडवांस्ड दैट लाइफ हैज अटेन्ड अ स्टेज वेयर ह्यूमन बींग्स आर नॉट कंप्लीटली डिपेंड डिपेंडेंट अपॉन देयर सराउंडिंग फॉर सर्वाइवल दे हैव द अबिलिटी टू मनिपुलेट देयर सराउंडिंग इन अ मैनर दैट इज सफिशियंट टू इंश्योर देयर सर्वाइवल and overcome sort certain calamities which otherwise would have resulted in their destruction theek hai and third basic requirement of civilization the element of urbanization should always be present theek hai to ye teen requirements hain kya kya the presence of a script the presence of an urban culture and the presence of a scientific and material advancement is this clear acha since human beings had not yet invented the script no written records exist and historians have to rely on archaeological evidence only to study it so this is something we have already discussed now on the basis of stratigraphic analysis the stone age may be divided into three or four phases stratigraphic analysis ka matlab strata ka matlab kya hota hai layer right so on the basis of division of the entire column of excavated land into different layers we can divide the entire history of the stone age into four different stages paleolithic mesolithic neolithic and calcolithic theek hai paleo means old so this is the ओल्ड स्टोन एज अब ये बताओ लॉजिकली वेयर डू यू थिंक रिमेन्स ऑफ द ओल्ड स्टोन एज आर गोइंग टू बी फाउंड नियर द सर्फेस और एट द वेरी बॉटम एट द वेरी बॉटम बिकॉज यू आर डिगिंग फ्रॉम टॉप टू बॉटम मीजोलिथिक मीजो मीन्स मिडिल सो दिस इज द मिडिल स्टोन एज सो ओवर हियर न्यूलिथिक दिस इज द न्यू स्टोन एज ओवर हियर and calcolithic was a later stage of development which is most recent when it comes to the lithic ages the stone ages the word calco means copper and what is the meaning of lith it means stone so this is the copper stone age the word paleolithic old stone age what does this tell you that it is the oldest phase of human life when human beings were using tools made out of which material stones exclusively mesolithic maybe was metal being used no neolithic mein no metals it is only during the calcolithic age that the use of metal has started 
एंड द अर्लीस्ट यूज मेटल कॉपर ठीक है दिस इज अ बेसिक टाइम लाइन ऑफ दीज एजेस पेलियोलिथिक एज रफली टू मिलियन ईयर्स अगो टू अबाउट एट थाउजेंड ईयर्स बी सी ई वॉट वॉज द डिफाइनिंग कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ ह्यूमन एग्जिस्टेंस ह्यूमन बींग्स वर हंटर्स एंड गैदरर्स ठीक है इट कैन फर्दर बी सब डिवाइडेड इन टू थ्री फेजेज लोअर मिडिल एंड अपर पेलियोलिथिक एज बताओ विच इज द ओल्डेस्ट विच इज द मोस्ट रिसेंट ऑफ दीज ओल्डेस्ट वन ओल्डेस्ट वन लोअर देन मिडिल देन अपर ठीक है देन ड्यूरिंग द मिजोलिथिक एज सम इकोनॉमिक चेंजेस हैपेंड वॉट हैपेंड द डोमेस्टिकेशन ऑफ एनिमल्स स्टार्टेड ह्यूमन बींग स्टार्टेड टू डोमेस्टिकेट देयर ओन एनिमल्स दे ट्रांसफॉर्म फ्रॉम हंटर गैदर इन टू पैस्टोरलिस्ट अनदर मेजर चेंज ड्यूरिंग द न्यूलिथिक एज बिगनिंग ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर ह्यूमन बींग्स फॉर नॉट सिंपली फूड कंज्यूमर्स नाउ दे हैड दबिलिटी टू प्रोड्यूस देयर ओन फूड एग्रीकल्चर बिगैन एंड द बिगनिंग ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर इज कंसिडर्ड टू बी द बिगनिंग ऑफ द न्यूलिथिक एज finally during the calculithic age human beings continued to practice agriculture agriculture became more sophisticated their technology became more sophisticated their animal husbandry activities also became more sophisticated so a number of agro pastoral communities that means communities which were both practicing agriculture as well as keeping animals they started to emerge another important feature was the beginning of the use of metals क्लियर है इतना अच्छा नाउ व्हेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द स्टोन एजेस व्हाट आर द थिंग्स दैट वी हैव टू कीप इन माइंड वेयर इज द यूपीएससी मोस्ट लाइकली टू आस्क यू अ क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम व्हाट आर दोज एरियाज फर्स्ट फील्ड इज गोइंग टू बी दैट ऑफ ह्यूमन एवोल्यूशन ड्यूरिंग विच फेज ऑफ द पेलियोलिथिक एज विच न्यू स्पीशीज ऑफ ह्यूमन बींग्स इमर्ज second is going to be the changes in the stone tool technology third is the living pattern what were the regions that the human beings occupied what were the factors why they lived in these regions what was their living pattern were they living in artificial houses were they living in natural dwellings what were they eating how were they procuring their food these are the kinds of questions that the upsc might ask you theek hai क्लियर तो पिक्चर है ना कि कहां कहां से क्वेश्चन आ सकता है ऑलरेट ओके नाउ फर्स्ट वी कम टू दी पेलियोलिथिक एज दिस इज द अर्लीएस्ट फेज ऑफ द स्टोन एज now it corresponds with the pleistocene epoch now if you have an idea about the geological time scale then you must know that the earth's past is divided into eras epochs etc right and the most recent epoch the one that is presently going on that is known as the holocene theek hai Holocene epoch is part of the Quaternary period, and Quaternary period belongs to the Pleistocene epoch. Pleistocene epoch corresponds with the Great Ice Age. So, tell me, what would the climatic conditions on the face of the Earth been like during the Pleistocene epoch? extremely cool temperatures large parts of the earth's surface would be covered in permafrost or ice caps what would be the status of primary productivity high or low extremely low therefore food food sources would be quite limited in nature in fact a large fauna such as big animals etc would have been confined to a very narrow belt of the earth's tropics and subtropics the rest would have been unsuitable for big animals or large trees at least theek okay? hai it corresponded with the pleistocene epoch the great ice age when the earth's climate was extremely cold and fauna was dominated by large woolly mammals 
it was in this period that human beings started evolving and did not have the ability to dominate their environment. Their population was also quite low. ठीक है? अच्छा. Now we are going to see that how throughout the Paleolithic age, human evolution has taken place. Human beings started to evolve from primates during the lower Paleolithic age itself. Okay? In Central Africa, the first, the earliest species of human beings known as Homo habilis evolved from primates. The word Homo in Latin denotes man and habilis denote the use the ability to use hands okay so this was the hand using man right he did not have the ability to stand upright completely straight therefore he was only half erect okay iska emergence kab hua hai lower paleolithic age then Further evolution also took place. The Homo habilis gradually evolved into the Homo erectus. What does this tell you? Man now had the ability to stand straight upright on his two feet. That is the upright man. And it was this species of human beings who started to migrate to different parts of the world around 5 lakh years ago. So, India mein kaun aaya? This species or this species? Homo erectus, right? Not the Homo habilis. Now, it is believed that they came to India from Africa using rafts to cross the sea, which would have been very shallow during the ice age. The ice caps would have been extremely large and all the mid-oceanic ridges that you can see today, na, they must have been acting like land bridges connecting huge continental masses with each other. So it would be possible for these people to migrate from Africa towards India. The first evidence of prehistoric life discovered in India was a hand axe discovered at a place known as Pallavaram. Where is this? Tamil Nadu. It is located in present day Madras, in present day Chennai only. Earlier it was outside Madras. And who was the person who discovered it? An English explorer, Robert Bruce Foote in 1863. So the first evidence of prehistoric life in India, Paleolithic life in India comes from Pallavaram in the form of a hand axe. Okay? Earliest human fossils have also been discovered, right? From a place known as Hathnora. This is in Madhya Pradesh. From the banks of the Narmada. Right. So skeletal remains have been discovered. And because it was discovered on the banks of the Narmada. This particular skeleton is known as the Narmada man. Okay. So Narmada man. Did he belong to the Paleolithic age, Neolithic age or Calcolithic age? Paleolithic age. Okay. Specifically which one? Lower Paleolithic age. Okay? So these are the kinds of questions that the UPSC might ask you. I'm not saying it will ask you, it might ask you. So you have to be careful. Next stage of development during the Middle Paleolithic age, Homo erectus evolved into the Homo sapiens archaic. Homo is man, sapiens is sentient that means the ability to have complex thoughts and archaic is old so this was the old thinking man right and then it was during the upper paleolithic age that homo sapiens archaic evolved into the homo sapiens sapiens so, two bar thinking are uh, that means extremely complex thought. He is known as the wise man. Right? And it was only in this stage 
that human beings developed the ability to communicate with each other. Their minds and their vocal cords were now anatomically proficient enough to have spoken language to speak to each other. Okay? So, language was a product of which of the Paleolithic ages? Lower, middle or upper? Upper Paleolithic age. Okay? Yaad rahega? Good. Next, let us talk about the technological developments throughout the Paleolithic ages. Now, during the Paleolithic age, primarily, quartz was used to make tools. Throughout the Lithic ages, stone is going to be used. Okay? Quartz is a type of which kind of rock? Metamorphic rock, right? Metamorphic rock, usually what are the characteristics associated with them? Are they hard or soft? Hard. Do they have a crystalline structure or amorphous structure? Crystalline. Are they malleable and ductile? Do they have a lot of elasticity or are they brittle? They are brittle. They cannot withstand large strikes, right? Sudden strikes. They are brittle. Okay? Now, why do you think human beings used this kind of stone and not any other kind of stone? Because they could be easily broken and chipped. The objective of human beings at this stage was to obtain sharp surfaces, sharp edges and quartzite stones were very useful in this regard. Okay? With the passage of time, the degree of refinement of these quartzite tools kept on increasing. During the lower Paleolithic age, the humans used tools known as core tools. Right? Now, core tools honge kya? Suppose this is one large pebble or one large rock. Right? You smash it against another rock. What is going to happen to the outer covering of this brittle rock? It is going to flake away. The inner core is going to have sharp jagged edges. What kind of work do you think you can use it for? Can you use it for performing surgery? Nay, can you use it for skinning animals? No. You can use it for brute force work. Okay? Such as hand axes, cleavers and choppers. Okay? Middle Paleolithic age, what is going to happen now? The stone technology is going to improve a little bit incrementally. Now, plague tools are going to come into fashion. Earlier, the outer covering of the rock which was earlier discarded, now that was used to make tools with a sharp point, right? So usually for digging activities or maybe for throwing as a spear, etc. They may have been used. Points, borers and scrapers. And upper Paleolithic age, tools became even more refined. Now the sharp slivers of the outer flake, they would be sharpened on one edge in order to obtain a fine and regular sharp edge in order to skin animals or skin trees, right? So, blades and burins are going to emerge. Okay? So, batao, lower, middle and upper Paleolithic age. What are the kinds of tools? Core, plate and blade tools. Clear? Hai? Now, coming to the living pattern. How did human beings obtain food during the Paleolithic age? Were they keeping animals in captivity? Were they cultivating their own crops? Also no, right? So how were they surviving? Hunting and gathering activities. 
वॉट डू यू थिंक वुड हैव अकाउंटेड फॉर द बिगर शेयर ऑफ अ पर्सन डायट्री नीड हंटिंग और गैदरिंग गैदरिंग एंड स्कैवेंजिंग फॉर फूड ठीक है बिकॉज राइट नाउ बैक देन ह्यूमन बींग्स डिड नॉट हैव द अबिलिटी डिड नॉट हैव द काइंड ऑफ वेपन्स दैट वर नीडेड टू हंट लार्ज क्वांटिटीज और लार्ज एनिमल्स राइट देर फोर दे वुड फुलफिल देयर डायट्री नीड प्राइमरीली बाई गैदरिंग ऑफ फूड एंड स्कैवेंजिंग फॉर फूड दैट मीन्स इफ एन एनिमल इज ऑलरेडी डेड दे वुड प्रॉब्ली कंज्यूम इट ठीक है ड्यूरिंग द पेलियोलिथिक एज ह्यूमन्स हैड टू डिपेंड अपॉन हंटिंग एंड गैदरिंग टू सस्टेन दम सेल्व Initially, they were gatherers before they began hunting with stone tools. Now, based on a hunter-gatherer lifestyle, do you think human beings would have the time and resources to make permanent houses, artificial houses, बनाने का उनके पास time होगा, जरिया होगा? No, it would not be possible. That is why they would need to move from place to place in order for इन ऑर्डर टू सर्च फॉर फूड इन ऑर्डर टू सर्च फॉर फूड सोर्सेज देर फोर दे वर माइग्रेटरी इन नेचर दे डिड नॉट प्रैक्टिस सेडेंट्री लाइफ एंड वर माइग्रेटरी इन नेचर दे लिव इन नेचुरल डिंग सच एज केव एंड रॉक शेल्टर्स एग्जाम्पल दीमबेट का केव ठीक है अच्छा राइट नाउ वॉट इज द साइज ऑफ द ह्यूमन पॉपुलेशन इज इट वेरी लार्ज it is quite small right what is the nature of primary productivity is it very high or low low so even though the population is low there is intense competition for the limited food sources theek okay? hai will it be possible for large groups of humans to cohabit to live together no why because the territory in which they are hunting as a group will not be able to sustain a very large population so a very long period during the paleolithic age most human beings used to live alone they were solitary beings or if at all they were living together they were living in very small groups or two or three people okay so human population was extremely small and for a large part human existence was solitary they competed with each other for food and shelter is this much clear so i hope a picture is forming in your minds that what the actual nature of life was during this point of time and because human existence was mostly solitary the concept of community was absent for a majority of the paleolithic age and it was only during the very end of the upper paleolithic age that small groups started to emerge and language developed so these are the very beginnings of a society this was an example of a band society theek hai isko bolte hain band society the size of the groups ranged roughly from 20 to 40 individuals at the maximum it would be about 100 individuals theek hai acha this coincided with the discovery of fire as well which would have undoubtedly improved the chances of human survival how would the discovery of fire improve the chances of survival two primary ways हाँ एक तो प्रोटेक्शन फ्रॉम लार्ज वाइल्ड प्रेडिटर्स एंड सेकेंड कुक्ड फूड फायर वुड किल ऑफ फेवरल ऑफ द डिजीज कैरिंग माइक्रोब्स इन अनकुक्ड फूड ठीक है तो लैंग्वेज बैंड सोसाइटी एंड द रिलायबल यूज ऑफ फायर in which part of the paleolithic age did they start upper paleolithic age mein theek hai acha now let us talk about the geographical extent of paleolithic life in the indian subcontinent 
Now, the Paleolithic man used to occupy all parts of the Indian subcontinent except for one particular physiographic feature. What was that? The Northern Plains, the Indo-Gangetic Plains. Why do you think the Paleolithic man did not live in the alluvial plains of North India? Kyo nahi rehta hoga? Haan, for their survival, they would need a regular supply of stones, large quartzite stone. And alluvial plains, mein will you get very large stones? Nahi milega. Absence of natural shelters, again, not present. Lack of stone to make tools, also a problem. Then, back then, the northern rivers were still quite young, prone to frequent flooding. They were quite large and violent. That is why they would be avoided. And the environment was also thickly forested, right? The plains were also thickly forested. And who is going to live in the thick, thick forests? Large animals which dominated the plains, thick forest, okay? So, if a Paleolithic man avoided living in alluvial plains, where do you think he would prefer to live? Where all these preconditions are fulfilled. Kaha pe hoga ye? On rocky outcrops, on hills, plateaus, rift valleys, etc. Okay? So, as a result, Paleolithic men preferred to live on plateaus, hills uh, and rift valleys. Some of the sites associated with the Paleolithic life, Sohan River Valley. So you must have heard of the Sohan culture. Kis tarah ka culture hai? Paleolithic, Mesolithic, Neolithic, Calcolithic? It is Paleolithic. Thik hai? Kashmir, the Balan Valley, Didwana, Narmada Valley and the Bhimbetka Caves. Is this clear? Why are they preferring to live on such regions? I hope there is no doubt. Now, let us talk about Paleolithic culture. What is the most visible cultural legacy of the Paleolithic age? Did they have any culture or not? Tha. In which form has it survived? In the form of rock paintings. Thik hai? Chha. Paleolithic man took an interest in painting. For example, the Bhimbetka cave complex. Common themes kya kya hai? Hunting scenes, figure of birds, animals and human beings. Handprints and fingerprints. What are the kind of themes that are not visible in the Paleolithic art? Kya nahi milta hai? Do you get any scenes of a tribe dancing around a fire doing jingalala? Nahi milta hai. Kyo nahi milta hai? Because community life was absent. The concept of communal living had not yet fully emerged. Thik hai? Now, colors were obviously obtained from natural pigments. Synthetic pigments banane ka koi option tha nahi. Commonly used colors were red obtained from hematite. What is this? Ferric oxide obtained usually from the soil. White obtained from lime or chalk. Black obtained from soot or lamp black and green along with yellow obtained from chalcedony. This is a particular type of rock which when crushed gives you this green color. Thik? And uh, when the amount of water in it is lower, it gives you yellow color. Thik? So it is a matter of hydration. Which color was cons conspicuous by absence? Blue has not been used because it was not naturally available in the Indian subcontinent. Take it. It is not present in the mineral composition of North India. Uh, flake tools were large or small in size. 
so obviously these could not be very very large these would have to be handled by hand and what were these flake tools being used for for skinning of animals or for debarking the trees right so handheld tools honge roughly half to one foot in dimension at the most correct next stage during the mesolithic age sorry during the stone age the mesolithic mesolithic means the middle stone age right now earlier the historians had not characterized the middle stone age as a separate phase of the stone age they used to consider it to be a part of the paleolithic age itself and there was a very sharp demarcation between the paleolithic age and the mesolithic age human beings existence as a hunter gatherer and domesticator that is food consumer to a food producer right but now as the archaeological understanding has graduated as it has matured mesolithic age has been introduced in between the paleo and the neolithic ages as an age of transition as an age of metamorphosis so this was roughly a block of 3000 years when human beings gradually migrated from being food consumers to being food producers theek hai and for this to happen it could not have happened without uh, some important climatic changes as well theek hai so before we understand these technological changes let us understand the climatic changes kya most important change hua jo pleistocene epoch hai the great ice age that came to an end along with the paleolithic age and the new age began kaun sa the holocene epoch what impact did this have on global temperatures they started to go up right what happened to the ice caps they started to melt and recede more and more land area became available what happened to primary productivity that would also increase on the surface of the earth fast dry wind started to blow now once the ice caps had melted where would all the melt water go about 99% would go into the oceans and the remaining would go into the overland depressions right so where there used to be large areas of permafrost or certain icy depressions now there were huge lakes and fresh water seas gradually because of the action of these fast and dry winds these lakes and waste wetlands are going to dry up leaving behind what grasslands theek hai so huge grasslands came to dominate the important biomes of the earth so grassland biome became quite important and what kind of population will these grasslands sustain which kind of animals grazing animals bovine animals theek hai so the population of grazing animals increased sharply and what do you think was the impact on the human population because of the improved climatic conditions would it increase or decline it would increase now there is pressure for finding a new food source why because of the increased population but there is also an opportunity what is that the increased population of grazing animals so which new economic activity is going to begin now domestication, domestication of animals so mesolithic period ke sath kya associate kya associate karna hai aapko hamesha animal domestication animal husbandry simultaneously due to minor uh, milder conditions human population also increased hunting and gathering were no longer sufficient to sustain them this led to the domestication of animals what were the first animals to be domesticated large buffaloes bulls cows etc or something else horse dogs no 
goat and sheep right so they would become the first to be domesticated they were manageable smaller in size more docile etc first being goats and sheep okay acha would the early human beings continue to be able to live in their caves and rock shelters no they would now have to come down into the grasslands and here they would have to start making temporary dwellings right why not permanent dwellings because pasture lands and the productivity is subject to changing seasons so with seasonal change they and their flock would have to migrate from one place to another and these artificial houses what do you think they would be made of are they going to be made of burnt brick and cement marble yes kuch aur sabse pehle to felt tents tangenge or for example tents made of animal skin etc then some more permanent houses a little more permanent such as mud houses etc theek hai so since natural shelter was not available in the grasslands people started living in artificial homes known as wattle and daub huts wattle and daub is a construction technique a wattle refers to an interlocking matrix or an interlocking lattice you can imagine that these people might have taken strips of bamboo and interlaced them together in order to make a stiff skeletal structure right so this would act as the skeleton of the walls and around them they are going to take wet mud and daub it thus constructing their homes the roof will be made of a thatch structure okay so that is wattle and daub technique of making huts so apart from wattle and daub techniques you can also add tents okay now the pastoral communities used to migrate from one place to another in search of greener pastures thus settled life had not yet emerged would you characterize the mesolithic uh, demographic pattern as nomadic or sedentary nomadic theek hai paleolithic wala nomadic neolithic mein it would change sedentary why because human beings now had the ability to grow their food wherever they were living theek hai this was not present earlier now talking about changes in the stone tool technology new kinds of stone tools called microliths emerged what is the meaning of the word micro small theek okay? hai so these are small stone tools roughly 1 to 3 cm in dimension theek hai acha what do you think such small tools are going to be used for iske liye use karenge these are having very sharp pointed uh, ends matlab bahut pehna end hai for example a very sharpened pencil like that ha yeah. so they would be used as arrow tips or spear tips arrow heads and spear head theek hai so it was during this period that human beings started to use projectile weapons as well theek hai such as arrows spears this is not single sling shots etc catapults wagera theek hai human beings became aware of this kind of projectile weapon acha now all of these are also examples of composite weapons or composite tools 
वॉट इज अ कॉम्पोजिट टूल अ टूल विच हैज मोर देन वन वर्किंग पार्ट बिफोर दिस वॉट वर यू ऑब्जर्विंग हैंड एक्स चॉपर क्लीवर ओनली वन इंस्ट्रूमेंट ओनली वन टूल नाउ इन ऑर्डर टू फायर एन एरो यू विल ऑल्सो नीड अ बो इन ऑर्डर टू स्लिंग अ शॉर्ट यू विल नीड दी स्लिंग ठीक है so these are the kinds of changes which happened in the stone tool technology kya kya important developments hue hain bhulna nahi hai microliths projectile motion and composite tools theek hai acha then talking about the further development of culture once again Painting continued to remain the most visible form of culture during the Mesolithic period. In fact, Mesolithic period was the most important from the point of view of the growth and diversity of rock paintings. ठीक है? If you are going to talk about rock paintings, you cannot forget about the Mesolithic period. The volume of rock paintings and the diversity. both increased exponentially during this period theek okay? hai the bhimbetka caves have been occupied almost continuously right from the upper paleolithic age up to the medieval age it consists of more than 500 painted surfaces about 90% of those can be attributed to the mesolithic period alone so this covers a history of more than 2 lakh years and only in a period of 3000 years you have the representation of almost 90% of the entire artwork theek hai acha now along with the previous themes new themes also appeared jaise ki community scenes ab wo jhinga lala wale scenes emerge hone lag jayenge right scenes from family life child bearing food preparation and abstract paintings what does all of this indicate were there any changes which were taking place in the nature of the uh, stone age society the stone age uh, thinking the philosophy etc kuch ho raha tha ya fir jaisa tha pehle se waisa hi tha change ho raha tha kya the concept of society was developing and human beings were starting to explore the nature of their existence the nature of their relationship with their surroundings resulting in these abstract paintings so philosophical developments were also taking place theek hai acha one important aspect that becomes visible from the mesolithic paintings was the division of labor on the basis of gender theek hai hunting who do you think will be involved in this men or women men while women will be engaged in all the other kinds of important economic work from gathering and animal husbandry to food preparation child rearing and child bearing care giving activities etc all of these will be the responsibility of women theek hai acha now most hunting scenes have male hunters while women have been shown gathering food preparing food and raising children men were usually depicted as stick figures while women had fuller forms so this is one very important difference in the manner of depiction of men and women what does this tell you 
हाउ डू यू इंटरप्रेट इट क्यों ऐसा होगा वाई डू यू थिंक दिस डिफरेंस एनी आइडियाज वेन यूज टू गिव बर्थ तो तो फिजिकल फीचर्स की वजह से दिखा दिया बाकी आदमी डंडे जैसा है तो डंडे जैसा दिखा दिया नहीं ना अच्छा सी दिस इज समथिंग दैट हिस्टोरियंस हैव पॉन्डर्ड अपॉन फॉर अ लॉन्ग पीरियड ऑफ टाइम एंड द मोस्ट कोजेंट एक्सप्लेनेशन दैट दे हैव कम अप विद इज दैट इट रिफ्लेक्टेड दे आर डीपनिंग कनेक्शन विद नेचर दे आर डीपनिंग कनेक्शन विद एनिमल्स the mesolithic people had started to develop religious beliefs right acha what do you think was the nature of their religion would they have a very high minded philosophy ki moksha mil jaye unity with god wahadat al wajood etc no what do you think they worshiped for they worshiped because they wanted something and because they were afraid and who were they most uh, frequently in contact with or permanently in contact with their surroundings that was nature so their religion was what is described as animism this is a set of beliefs based upon the idea that all components of nature whether it is the trees the stones the rivers the clouds the skies animals human beings children elderly leaves flowers birds all of them have a soul and all of them are interconnected human beings did not seem see themselves as being separate as being distinct from this entire equation rather we were part of this equation and for human beings to take away to destroy even one aspect would be considered a sin so animals ko kya darja mil, milta hoga yahan pe would they be seen as sacred or not sacred so animals were considered to be sacred and who had the responsibility of killing animals men or women men so with that would come a religious sense of guilt do you think ki agar aapne khoon kiya hai kisi ka who you think is a sacred personality would you want your portrait to be part of the family portrait will you be will you want to be associated with that sense of guilt or not you will try to escape it that is why deliberately male figures were made representative while more accuracy was visible in the female figures is this clear samajh aaya hai pakka very silent kya ho gaya hai samajh mein aa raha hai na chalo good now another unique aspect of painting which emerged during this period is known as एक्सरे पेंटिंग एक्सरे का काम क्या होता है टू एल्यूमिनेट योर इंटरनल हार्ट टूटा है एक्सरे करवाया अंदर से दिख गया जो डॉक्टर ने पट्टी कर दी सही हो गया ठीक है एक्सरे पेंटिंग्स वर दो पेंटिंग्स इन विच द इंटरनल ऑर्गन ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट वर ऑल्सो शोन फॉर एग्जाम्पल इट इट इज अ प्रेगनेंट वुमेन a fetus is going to be shown in her womb if you have just eaten a fish a fish is going to be shown in your stomach and x-ray paintings were made not only of human beings but also of animals theek hai acha now mesolithic paintings are also remarkable for their depiction of animals now since animals have now a religious importance a lot of care and attention would be given to depicting them in anatomically correct proportions theek hai so uh, human beings not only got a better idea of animal anatomy but also gave a lot of care and attention to depicting it accurately the relationship between man and animals is a recurrent theme 
And what is the kind of relationship? Is it unidirectional that man will always be the hunter and animal will always be the hunted? No. Dono cheeze ho sakti hai. Theek hai? Where man is both the hunter as well as the hunted. Now, apart from painting, for the first time we have concrete evidence of the emergence of religious beliefs. Depicted in what? In the ritualistic burials from Maha, Mahadaha and Sarai Nahar Rai. Both of these are in UP, Mirzapur Allahabad region. Wale mein. Hai? Now, what do you understand by ritualistic burial? A burial that has been carried out in accordance with predefined rules and regulations. Proper vidhi ke saath follow kiya gaya hai. Thik hai? And what is the evidence of this ritualized burial? That all the skeletons are oriented in a north to south direction. Could this have been possible if there was no formal belief practice? Belief and practice? Nahi ho sakta tha. So this is the biggest evidence of the existence of religious beliefs. Right? Further, superstition was also a part and parcel of their religious philosophy. How do we know this? There is a place called Chopani Mando, once again in UP, where the feet of the skeletons have been chopped off before, uh, sorry, below the ankles post-mortem. That is, after the person died, his feet were chopped off. Why do you think this was? Because the people feared that in the dead of the night when everybody is sleeping, somebody might emerge out of the grave and start chasing them. So these people probably believed that there were things such as ghosts and spirits also. And this also tells us that they believed in the concept of life after death. Okay? So what are the important features of the Mesolithic religion? It is a form of nature worship. It manifested itself in the form of animism. People followed ritual burial practices. They believed in the concept of life after death. And superstitious beliefs and practices were part and parcel of the Mesolithic religion. Okay? Is this clear? Now, coming to the important sites associated with the Mesolithic phase, four or five have been given over here. Langnaj, this is in Gujarat, Bhimbetka in MP, this is Chopani Mando. Chopani Mando in UP, Bir Bhanpur in West Bengal, Bellari in Karnataka, and Tutikorin in Tamil Nadu. Take it. You don't need to remember all of them on the off chance that the UPSC asks you to associate one with the other. Then you should remember at least Langnaj and Bir Bhanpur. These are the two most important ones. Langnaj and Bir Bhanpur. Next, we have the Neolithic age. What is the demarcating line between the sorry, Mesolithic and Neolithic age? What was that change in the nature of human existence which allows us to say that the Neolithic age has begun? Beginning of agriculture. Okay? So that becomes, becomes the dividing line. But for the beginning of agriculture, some climatic changes must have also happened. Now, 
ice age had ended and gradually temperature continued to increase the climate warmed up further and conditions became more con conducive for human life what happened to the human population that also increased right and agriculture began to meet the growing food requirement marking the beginning of the neolithic age so you must have heard that uh, necessity is the mother of all invention and as and when the pressures of food requirement are going to increase human beings are going to come up with newer and newer solutions to solve this problem so agriculture was the newest solution which were the earliest crops to be cultivated wheat and barley were the first crops to be cultivated okay the first evidence of cultivation has come from a place called Mehergarh. This is in present day Balochistan of Pakistan. In the valley of which river? The Bolan River. Okay? So, Bolan Valley, Balochistan. Rice was also cultivated during this period. And the earliest evidence of rice cultivation comes from the Bolan Valley. Ye wala kaun sa hai? Bolan Valley and rice cultivation ka Bolan Valley. Where is this? Eastern UP. So rice was also cultivated. Its earliest example comes from Koldiva near Allahabad in the Bolan Valley. And millets were the first crops to be cultivated in South India. ठीक है? Is this much clear? With the beginning of agriculture, what were the other changes that were visible in human life, human existence? Pattern of living mein kuch change hua? Kya? Would human beings need to migrate from place to place? No, they could live at the same place and cultivate their food. So with the advent of agriculture, sedentary life emerged and human beings started living in permanently settled villages. So the kind of structures they would build would have greater permanence, greater robustness. Okay? They would not have to be deserted seasonally and therefore wattle and daub huts were replaced by more permanent houses made up of mud bricks. Okay? So mud bricks, when did they emerge during the Mesolithic or the Neolithic period? During the Neolithic period. Sure. Mehargarh mein wheat. Yeah. Mehargarh se sabse pehla evidence aata hai cultivation ka in the entire subcontinent uh, dating to roughly 7000 BC. Thik hai? That was wheat and barley. From Koldiva roughly during 6000 BC we get the evidence of rice cultivation. Thik hai? Mehargarh kis wali mein hai? Bolan ya Belan? Bolan Valley. Koldiva? Bolan Valley. Rice cultivation, Bolan Valley or Bolan Valley? Bolan Valley. Wheat cultivation, Bolan Valley. Okay. Now, coming to the technological changes. There was an Australian historian, Vincent Gordon Child. He has termed the technological developments that took place during the Neolithic age as a revolution. He calls it the Neolithic revolution. Take it. So, what was the most revolutionary change that happened during this period? A new source of food had become available. Kya? Food grains, cultivated food, right? Now, at the end of the harvest season, you would need some place to store those food grains, right? And this created the need for the emergence of some utensils some storage devices so what began as the result of this pottery okay earlier pots used to be made only by hand but later finer quality pots were made using the potter's wheel okay a potter's wheel say wheel ko nikal karke kisi akalmand insaan ne kaha pe lagaya at the back of a cart earlier it was pulled by human beings later it would be pulled by animals and this completely revolutionized the scope of human contact those communities which till now were living secluded matlab 100 kilometers ke distance pe hain to pata nahi hai that there is somebody who exists over there 
Now it became possible for such communities to come into regular contact with each other. What do you think is going to happen to trade networks? They are going to become more and more voluminous. And with the exchange of commodities, what else is going to be exchanged? Ideas are going to be exchanged. For unique problems, unique solutions will become easier to discover because of the growing complexity of human interactions. Okay? The field of human innovation is going to multiply as well. Okay? So that is why it is known as the Neolithic Revolution. What is the biggest invention during this period? The potter's wheel. The wheel. Okay? It was the wheel which enabled human beings to graduate from the stone age and within 10,000 years to the space age. Alright? Sure. So, agriculture was introduced. Uh, agriculture introduced the need for storage leading to the emergence of pottery. At first, these pots were handmade and later the pottery wheel was invented. The invention of the wheel revolutionized transportation. Men and material could be transported over long distances using animal power. As a result, exchange networks emerged, connecting several communities. The exchange of ideas triggered technical innovation in several fields such as agriculture, irrigation, textile and stone technology. Further, new kinds of stone tools also emerged during this period. These were known as Celts. What were these? These were tools with handles. So earlier hand axes were being used. Now, a lever would be attached to that axe. So, this would become a proper axe. What would be the result? They would become much more effective. With the use of lesser force, a bigger impact could be had. Load arm effort arm pada hoga school mein bachpan mein. So now, we have a larger effort arm, longer effort arm. Okay? So, hammers, axes, etc. These emerged. Neolithic tools were also highly polished and refined. Now, what allowed these tools to be highly polished and refined? The change of material that was being used. Earlier, which kind of stone tool stone was being used? Quads. Now, that was replaced by igneous rocks such as basalt and granite. Therefore, these tools were more precise, effective and robust. Okay? All right. Now, the remarkable technological progress prepared the ground for the emergence of civilization characterized by intensive agriculture, large cities and extensive trade. So, it was the Neolithic age which established the platform for the future stages of human development, material development, right? Because of the emergence of such trade networks. All right. Now, these are the names of a few important Neolithic sites that you might want to keep in mind. In Jammu and Kashmir, two important sites, Gufkral and Burzahom, right? Both of them are located near Srinagar only. Gufkral ka unique uh, feature kya hai? That from here, pit dwelling is found. What do you understand by pit dwelling? Let's suppose this is a very cold region and on the side of the hill, human beings have dug a huge pit, huge depression. They have covered the top with a, with a thatched surface and they descend into it to live over here. The thatched roof has, has a small hole and so they can build a fire within this structure to keep warm during the winter season. Isko bolte hai? Pit dwelling. Where have we found this from? From Gufkral. From Burza home, once again we find pit dwellings plus the evidence of the burial of dogs with human beings. What does this tell you? That dogs had probably also been domesticated by this point of time. In Bihar, there is a site known as Chiran. And the unique feature over here is the use of 
bone tools now these are not exactly bone tools rather they should be called antler tools that means tools made out of the uh, horns of certain kinds of deer antelopes theek okay? hai balochistan mein mehargad what is the significance of mehargad the earliest evidence of agriculture in up we have koldiva right significance earliest evidence of rice cultivation from assam we have daujali heading this is the eastern most neolithic site to have been ever discovered in the subcontinent and from karnataka we have two sites maski and brahmagiri theek okay? hai so you might want to keep this in mind yahan tak ki kahani clear hai na and then we finally come to the sorry we finally come to the last stage of the stone age the calcolithic age bataya tha calco ka matlab copper so this is the copper stone age it was characterized by the emergence of agro pastoral communities in different parts of the subcontinent plus the use of copper tools along with stone tools right technological changes stone tools continued to be used and copper tools emerged what kind of tools hand axes copper angles copper boards knives pins hooks rods etc So you can imagine them being used for a multiplicity of purposes, from fishing to uh, you can say chopping activities. They could be used as weapons, etc. Okay. What do you think happened to the occupational diversity? Would that remain the same or increase? That would also increase. People continue to hunt, gather, domesticate animals, and cultivate their food. So, with the beginning of agriculture, the other economic activities did not go out of fashion. They continued to remain an important part of the dietary makeup. Domesticated animals included buffalo, uh, sheep, goat, pig, dog, etc. What were the crops that were grown? barley wheat rice lentils millets grams peas cotton etc right now apart from these sustenance activities other kinds of crafts production also emerged including pottery metallurgy weaving bead making and shell work etc so what kind of activities are these primary economic activities or secondary economic activities these are secondary economic activities what do you think was the nature of these activities were they part of an organized industrial setup or do you think they were cottage industries cottage. they would be cottage industries so people would during the uh, correct season be involved in their food production activities and in the off season probably they would take up all these other kinds of activities theek okay? hai then talking about the living pattern do you think human beings of calcolithic communities were migratory nomadic or were they sedentary sedentary so settled village life had emerged fully by the calcolithic period with well established socio economic hierarchies what do you think was the reason behind the growing stratification of the society yeah डिविजन ऑफ सरप्लस अच्छा वॉट एल्स इट वॉज द ग्रोइंग कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ प्राइवेट प्रॉपर्टी 
and since property in the hands of individuals would never be equally divided therefore socio economic classes started to emerge as well this was also reflected in the morphology of these settlements kaise humko dekhne ke liye milega are all the houses going to be of the same size and quality no the houses of the wealthy are going to be larger better built while those of the poor are going to be smaller or lower quality theek hai then because the size of the settlements their population has increased you would also need some kind of governance structure and this is also reflected in the architecture of the calculitic age a few of the houses in some of the larger settlements are circular in shape while the majority of the houses are rectangular in shape what do you think this indicates is circular house kiska hoga common people ka ya fir ruling class ka probably belongs to the ruling class then because of the increasing socio economic differentiation aur kya change hoga settlement pattern mein do you think people of all socio economic classes are going to live in the same locality no abhi bhi delhi mein there are some areas jisko bola jata hai posh ilaka hai right and some which are not so posh so similarly some people especially the richer ones are going to live on one side of the town while the rest live in another region and these kinds of changes are quite visible at a place called इनाम गांव ठीक है दिस इज इन महाराष्ट्र तो यहां पे क्या देखने के लिए मिलता है दैट ऑन दी वेस्टर्न साइड ऑफ द सेटलमेंट द हाउसेज आर ऑफ स्मॉलर साइज दे डू नॉट हैव अ सराउंडिंग इनक्लोजर वॉल वाइल ऑन द ईस्टर्न साइज द हाउसेज टेन टू बी लार्जर सम ऑफ द हाउसेज इन द ईस्टर्न इनक्लेव आर ऑल्सो सर्क्यूलर सम ऑफ देम ऑल्सो हैव अ Boundary surrounding them and enclosure wall surrounding them. ठीक है नहीं ये तो मैंने बंद कर रखा है ये क्योंकि आवाज आ रहा था इसमें ठीक है तो कहां से हमको ये देखने के लिए मिलता है From इनाम गांव अच्छा What do you think was happening to the general level of prosperity in these settlements? Was that was it the same at the same level as the Neolithic, or was it increasing? It was increasing, and with the increasing concentration of wealth, the desire to protect that wealth is also going to increase. And how to do that? To build some protective structures. And kya hoga most visible protective structure? What do you think? a fortification wall so some of the calculithic settlements also started to have fortification walls and over here you can take down the name of a particular site nagra this is in madhya pradesh theek hai acha what according to you would be the most valuable articles of private property ek to immovable property hoga that is property as land and movable property mein kya kya hoga animals right now because each and every household has their own animals therefore a unique feature of the calculithic houses was that all of them came with a separate enclosure for animals earlier during the neolithic period this was not visible what did that indicate that probably the entire village used to own all their animals as a whole so it they were considered to be communal property but now they have started to be considered as private property is this clear what other kinds of immovable property do you think some valuable items such as ornament some tool something else right and uh, once again we get to see the evidence of economic differentiation from the grave cultures of the uh, calculithic age the graves of wealthy people 
would have items of greater value maybe some items of gold jewelry or silver jewelry while the uh, lesser fortunate or the poorer people would have some items of lesser value all right so this is another thing that became visible <laughs> Talking about the external contacts of the Calculithic people. Now, did the Calculithic cultures exist as isolated self-sufficient holes or did they have outside contact? They would have outside contact. The scope of human contact would have gone on to continue expanding from the Neolithic period onwards, right? So, while a number of distinct Calculithic cultures existed in different parts of India, almost all of them, all of them could be proven to have had continuous contact, if not with each other, then at least with a contemporary Bronze Age civilization. Konsa? The Indus Valley civilization or Harappan civilization. Theka? Now, what is the defining feature of the Calculithic age? Naam mein hai, it is calco copper right and there was only one primary source of copper in the entire subcontinent kahan par khetri mines in rajasthan right so all the copper that was used by the harappans by the other calculithic people almost all of it was coming from the khetri mines only then we also have certain similarities in the ceramic cultures that means the kinds of pottery that was used across these cultures for example we have a couple of cultures the rangpur and prabhas cultures these flourished in the gujarat region the saurashtra coast and they were contemporary with the later harappan civilization now the kind of pottery that is found here is known as uh, lustrous red ware. Right? And this lustrous red ware is also found from the contemporary later Harappan sites of the Saurashtra region. That means that these items must have been regularly exchanged with each other. Talking about their culture. So, ab batao, what is going to happen to the volume of rock paintings on rock shelters, walls, etc. Caves. Come ho jayega. Kyo? because of settled life now those centers are going to be largely deserted people are not living over there and in this scenario pottery is going to become the most important canvas for the calculithic artists right so painted pottery emerged as the most visible cultural legacy of the calculithic people and the characteristic pottery of this period is known as the OCP, ochre colored pottery. Ochre kya hota hai? It is a reddish yellow color. Theke? In Hindi it is known as Geru. It is used to paint your uh, these things. Uh, gamla vagera paint karne ke liye, pots, flower pots vagera. Right? And they were painted with designs of flowers, animals, birds, linear and geometric patterns, etc. Right? The base color of the pots was ochre and the color used for making the paintings was black. But this does not mean that this was the only kind of pottery that was found. Okay? In different parts of India, distinct cultures existed right so important calculithic cultures in india they were the ahar culture the ganeshwar jodhpura culture the kayath culture the malwa culture jorve culture and the prabhas rangpur culture and each of them would also have their own distinct forms of pottery Ochre colored pottery, why is it called the characteristic pottery of this period? 
बिकॉज इट वॉज यूनिफॉर्मली फाउंड अक्रॉस ऑल दीज कल्चर फॉर एग्जाम्पल द डिस्टिंग पोट्री ऑफ प्रभास कल्चर रंगपुर कल्चर कौन सा था अभी हमने डिस्कस किया था लश्रस रेडवेयर कयाथ कल्चर का डिस्टिंग पोट्री दैट वॉज बफ कलर्ड पॉटरी इन गणेश्वर जोधपुरा कल्चर यू हैड इनसाइज वेयर ठीक है तो ऑल दो ऑकर कलर पॉटरी वॉज अ लिंक बिटवीन दिरामिक कल्चर ऑफ ऑल दीज डिफरेंट कैलकुलेथिक कम्युनिटीज ईच ऑफ देम ऑल्सो हैड देयर ओन डिस्टिंग कैलकुलेथिक सॉरी सिरामिक कल्चर ठीक है द लोकेशन ऑफ द आहार कल्चर साउथ ईस्टर्न राजस्थान इन दी वैली ऑफ दी बनास रिवर उदयपुर राजसामंद चित्तौड़गढ़ वाला जो रीजन है ना ओवर देयर इंपॉर्टेंट साइट आहार गिलुंद एंड बालाथल देन दी गणेश्वर जोधपुरा कल्चर इन नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न राजस्थान नियर जयपुर सो दिस इज इवन मोर नॉर्थ ऑफ जयपुर इंपॉर्टेंट साइट गणेश्वर एंड जोधपुरा दयाथ कल्चर इन मध्य प्रदेश इन दी वैली ऑफ दी चंबल रिवर इंपॉर्टेंट साइट कयाथ प्रेजेंट डे उज्जैन मालवा कल्चर अपियर्ड अ फ्यू सेंचुरीज आफ्टर दी डिसअपियरेंस ऑफ दी कयाथ कल्चर इन दी सेम रीजन सो इट अपियर्ड इन दी प्लेस ऑफ दी कयाथ कल्चर इंपॉर्टेंट साइट नाबदोली ईरान एंड नागडा जोरवे कल्चर इट वॉज प्रॉबेबली द मोस्ट वेल डेवलप्ड एंड मोस्ट एक्सटेंसिव ऑफ ऑल द कैलकुलेथिक कल्चर इट फ्लरिश इन द महाराष्ट्र रीजन हैविंग लार्ज साइट सच एज दाइमाबाद एंड इनाम गांव एंड फाइनली द प्रभास रंगपुर कल्चर इन द गुजरात सौराष्ट्र रीजन इंपॉर्टेंट साइट रंगपुर प्रभास पाटन दैट इज प्रेजेंट डे जूनागढ़ ठीक है so these are the important calculithic cultures now we have covered the stone ages and let us now discuss certain questions acha stone age ke questions hai nahi isme theek hai please remind me i'll send some एडिशनल क्वेश्चन तो नीच से बनाऊंगा मैं ठीक है नेक्स्ट टॉपिक वी हैव टू कवर हरप्पन सिविलाइजेशन लेट एस टेक अ शॉर्ट ब्रेक टेन मिनट्स का उसके बाद इसको कवर करते हैं ठीक है ऑल राइट सो वी हैव टू स्टार्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट द हरप्पन सिविलाइजेशन है ना other names for the harappan civilization that you might be aware of the indus valley civilization why do you think it was known as the indus valley civilization because most of the important sites that were discovered in the earlier period were on the banks of the river indus or its tributaries theek hai that is why earlier it was known as the indus valley civilization but in the most more recent years a number of discoveries have been made far away from the indus river valley and its tributaries a number of sites have been discovered in the valley of a river that was earlier known as the saraswati valley that is the dried up ghaggar hagra river bed system okay so a more accurate description of this civilization would be the indus सरस्वती सिविलाइजेशन बट इवन मोर रिसेंटली अ नंबर ऑफ लार्ज साइट्स हैव बीन डिस्कवर्ड विच वर फाउंड नीदर ऑन द बैंक्स ऑफ द इंडस रिवर नॉर ऑन द सरस्वती रिवर राधर दीज साइट्स वर फाउंड इन एरियाज वेयर नो रिवर सिस्टम्स एग्जिस्टेड ठीक है so they were found in arid regions 
and this created another problem so what do you call this uh, civilization if not the indus civilization not the indus saraswati civilization and then the archaeologists relied upon an age old convention to name this uh, civilization after the first site to have been discovered so harappa because it was the first site to be discovered became the basis for the name of this civilization harappan civilization okay now there is an entire story associated with the process of its discovery ye sab aap apne aap se pad sakte ho important thing to remember that in 1921 it was john marshall and dayaram sahani two archaeologists of the archaeological survey of india john marshall was the director general of the archaeological survey of india dayaram sahani was only 23 years of age at that time he was simply a surveyor both of them conducted extensive excavations at harappa this is located in present day punjab of pakistan more specifically the montgomery district of punjab right and so harappa came to be the type site of this new civilization that was discovered in the next year 1922 Rakhal Das Banerji excavated an even larger site Mohenjo-daro this time located in Sindh the Larkana district so district of Sindh on the banks of the river Indus theek hai Harappa on the banks of the river Ravi so these were the two earliest sites to be discovered will you remember them the name of the archaeologist associated theek hai now let us briefly discuss the characteristics of the harappan civilization harappan civilization was a riverine civilization all the important sites were situated along important perennial rivers and their tributaries the indus and the saraswati that is the present day ghaggar hakra river system right and therefore it was a riverine civilization what does this tell you why do you think it was a riverine civilization what was the significance of rivers for the survival and health of such of the civilization because of their agricultural importance so that means the economic basis of the civilization was a large agrarian surplus based upon river irrigation this was because the harappans practiced intensive agriculture and depended heavily on flood irrigation which kind of irrigation is it well irrigation canal irrigation or flood irrigation flood irrigation what is the difference between canal irrigation and flood irrigation flood irrigation kya hota hai during the dry season just before the flood season the seeds are planted in the flood plain of the river that means that tranche of land where the river naturally floods every year then when the floods come the structures are made in such a way so that the water once it recedes it does not go completely out of the field rather it stays on the field right this kind of irrigation was practiced not only in ancient harappan civilization but also in the nile civilization कहां पर इजिप्ट ठीक है नाइल सिविलाइजेशन वॉज ऑल्सो एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ अ रिवर सिविलाइजेशन सेकेंडली द हरप्पन सिविलाइजेशन बिलोंग्स टू द ग्रेट ट्रेडिशन वॉट डज दिस इंडिकेट ग्रेट ट्रेडिशन किसको बोलते हैं दैट लिटरेसी वॉज क्वाइट वाइड स्प्रेड एंड हाउ डू वी नो दैट लिटरेसी वॉज वाइड स्प्रेड because the elements the uh, remains of the harappan script have been found from public spaces they have been found from ordinary pieces of pottery things that uh, common harappans would have used on a daily basis okay so literacy was widespread as is evident from steel spot sign boards etc since the harappan script remains undeciphered the civilization was also proto historic that means there was a script but we haven't been able to decipher it right then the harappan civilization was also a bronze age civilization uh, 
ब्रॉन्ज एज सिविलाइजेशन इज अ कैटेगरी ऑफ सिविलाइजेशन विच फ्लरिश ड्यूरिंग दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम ऑल ऑफ देम हैड एक्सपर्टीज इन ब्रॉन्ज मेटेलर्जी so the harappan civilization was contemporary of other bronze age civilization such as the mesopotamian egyptian persian and chinese civilizations all these civilizations coexisted with the harappan civilization and all of them were using bronze theek hai it is unique among the contemporary civilizations why due to its extensive town planning now although all of these civilizations along with the harappan civilization share the characteristic of being being a bronze age civilization but the harappan civilization had one unique characteristic the kind of town planning that was visible in the harappan cities was not found anywhere else theek okay? hai so this is the idea this is a brief understanding of the characteristic of the harappan civilization next talking about the origins of the harappan civilization now when it comes to the origins of the harappan civilization it has been a matter of ongoing debate theek okay? hai there is a lot of historical controversy regarding this uh, subject now one of the earlier theories which was quite dominant was that of foreign origin of the harappan civilization and within this foreign origin both the nationalist as well as colonial historians had made their contributions theek okay? hai what had the colonial historian said that means those historians who were trying to justify the establishment and sustenance of british rule in india what were they saying did they give the credit of establishing this civilization to indians no they would want to credit somebody else they were trying to prove that all the so called glorious phases of the indian past was due to the contribution of certain outsiders so once again foreigners ka contributions yahan pe highlight karne ki koshish karenge and they said that the harappan civilization had emerged as a result of the migration of mesopotamians right so mesopotamians who had established a civilization as early as the 9th millennia bce they migrated towards india and in a very quick manner in a very sudden manner it resulted in the emergence of a full fledged civilization in the northwestern portion of the subcontinent so colonial historians ka idea kya hai was it the idea of gradual emergence or sudden emergence sudden origin right then we come to the category of uh, nationalist historians now there was a very popular trend among the early nationalist historians to glorify the aryan culture as the indigenous culture of india so in logon ne kya bola who was responsible for the construction of the harappan civilization it was the aryans so they have given the idea of the aryan origin theory ठीक है नाउ द आइडिया ऑफ द कलोनियल हिस्टोरियंस द आइडिया ऑफ सडन ओरिजिन हैज बीन डिस्क्रेडिटेड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ आर्कियोलॉजिकल फाइंडिंग्स वाइल द आइडिया ऑफ आर एन ओरिजिन हैज बीन डिस्क्रेडिटेड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ डीएनए एविडेंस ठीक है तो फर्स्ट लेट एस टॉक अबाउट द आर्कियोलॉजिकल फाइंडिंग्स टू लर्न अबाउट द रूट ऑफ द हरप्पन सिविलाइजेशन नाउ according to most historians the harappan civilization emerged gradually and was built by the indigenous people of india and not foreigners so these people are trying to dispute the theory of foreign origin or sudden origin okay they point towards the existence of 
डिस्टिंक्ट प्री हरप्पन एंड अर्ली हरप्पन फेजेस ऑफ लाइफ दैट मीन्स दोज स्टेजेस विच आर लाइक द वेरियस एवोल्यूशनरी स्टेजेस ऑफ दिस सिविलाइजेशन दैट हैव आल्सो बीन डिस्कवर्ड दिस पॉइंट्स टूवर्ड्स अ ग्रेजुअल एवोल्यूशन रादर दैन अ सडन ओरिजिन राइट in the same region to prove the gradual evolution of life from the neolithic age to the bronze age which took place over more than 4000 years right for example in the 7th millennium bce small communities of animal herders started to practice subsistence level agriculture and evidence of this is found from नाल जोब कुल्ली मुंडिका राना घोंडई एटसेट्रा दीज आर ऑल नियर दी अफगानिस्तान पाकिस्तान बॉर्डर ठीक है टूवर्ड्स दी ट्राई रीजन ऑफ दी बलोचिस्तान पंजाब एंड अफगान बॉर्डर तो उस रीजन के आसपास है ये और राइट वॉट काइंड ऑफ टेरेन इज इट इज इट वेरी गुड टेरेन नो इज इट वेरी फर्टाइल लैंड नो सो दी एग्रीकल्चर वॉज subsistence level which phase of life had started the neolithic phase of life okay acha then during the 6th millennium bc agriculture improved and population increased leading to the emergence of large neolithic villages such as mehargarh so once again we are still in the neolithic phase of life during the 5th millennium bc these people from balochistan afghanistan region started migrating towards the indus region and what do you think was the result on agricultural productivity that would increase why because of the gentler climate because of the better availability of water perennial rivers fertile soil etc theek hai so 5th millennium bc over time people migrated from balochistan to the indus region the evolution of farming communities gained momentum due to the presence of fertile plains perennial rivers gentle climate abundant mineral resources etc right then by the 4th millennium bc so by the middle of the 4th millennium bc agriculture improved substantially resulting in the emergence of larger settlements and some features of town life and some of the important sites associated are amri and kotdiji both in sindh right so this is known as the pre harappan phase of life right then around 2800 bc onwards a stage of agricultural surplus was achieved and this revolutionized life by freeing the productive labor to engage in secondary economic activities people were no longer living hand to mouth and now they had a lot of free time and free labor in order to express their creative abilities so they would start to get involved in productive activities such as craft production the exchange of those craft goods etc ठीक है, so craft production, trade, commerce, etc. all increased. Centers of craft production and trade started to emerge, and they they took the shape of larger towns and small cities, right? So leading to the rise of even larger settlements, which were increasingly urban in characteristic. However, trade during this period was mostly local in nature that means these centers used to trade with their immediate peripheries or maybe with a surrounding or nearby town right examples of such towns kalibangan rakhigadi mohanjodaro harappa etc this phase is known as the early harappan phase of life samajh mein aaya hai <coughs> and then finally we are going to graduate towards the mature harappan phase of life theek hai 2300 bc onwards this was the mature harappan phase so what would be the characteristics large well developed cities with 
large extensive trade networks both internal as well as international trade would be taking place high level of prosperity etc so extensive interregional and inter civilizational trade networks emerged high material prosperity due to the favorable trade significant population increase emergence of larger well planned cities such as harappa mohenjodaro dholavira rakhigadi etc thus the presence of antecedent cultures indicates that the harappan civilization was indeed a gradually evolved indigenous civilization and not a foreign implanted suddenly emerged civilization ye clear hai so how has the foreign origin theory or the sudden origin theory given by the colonial historians been knocked down i hope that is clear now what about the aryan origin theory फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू शुड नो वॉट इट स्टेट क्या बोलता है ये दैट दरपन सिविलाइजेशन वॉज द वर्क ऑफ द वेदिक आर्यन सो हू वर दीज पीपल दीज वर दैस्टोरल नोमैड्स हुरिजिनल होमलैंड वॉज द सेंट्रल एशियन स्टेप ऑफ नॉर्दर्न ईरान ठीक है Which mountain range dominates this region, northern Iran? Me, Caucasus, right? So from the Caucasus region. So they have said this. Tha. Now, a few years back, the BHU and the Harvard University conducted a DNA analysis of the cochlear DNA. That means the DNA found in the ear canal of some female skeletons at a place called Rakhi Gadhi. कहा है राखी गढ़ी इन विच स्टेट हरियाणा में ठीक है ना दे वर सर्चिंग फॉर द प्रेजेंस ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर डीएनए और अ पर्टिकुलर जीन नोन एज दी आर वन ए वन जीन दर वन ए वन जीन इज प्रेजेंट इन ऑल पीपल हु हैव स्टेप पैस्टोरल एंडस्ट्री ठीक है सो so, the presence of this gene would have confirmed that the harappan civilization was actually the creation of people who had descended from these people the aryans to ye batao has this gene been found or not the theory has been disproven to mila hoga ya nahi mila hoga this gene was not found in the genetic makeup of the skeletons at rakhi gadhi thus disproving the aryan origin theory is this clear sun mein aaya hai will you remember this and its significance gene ka naam yaad rahega chalo good yeah aryan invasion theory Aryan invasion theory is regarding the destruction of the Harappan civilization. Origin के बारे में नहीं है वो ठीक है Next we come to the geographical extent of the Harappan civilization. So here it would be better if you had a map of india or you go to your ncert wahan pe map mein dekh jayega aapko bahut acche se that what exactly we are talking about the remains of the harappan civilization kin kin desho se mile hain india and pakistan any harappan sites from afghanistan not so far any from iran not so far theek hai so they have been discovered from pakistan and india which provinces of pakistan sindh balochistan and पंजाब एंड इंडिया में जम्मू एंड कश्मीर पंजाब हरियाणा राजस्थान उत्तर प्रदेश गुजरात महाराष्ट्र एमपी से कोई साइट मिला है नहीं मिला है नॉट येट ठीक है सो एमपी इज दी आउटलायर इट इज मिसिंग ओवर हियर इट इज बिलीव दैट दरपन सिविलाइजेशन 
was larger than all the other contemporary Bronze Age civilizations. If you look at the old NCRTs, its area would be given in square kilometers, 12,96,000 something something kilometers. But since new sites are being discovered almost on an annual basis, we have written roughly 13 lakh square kilometers. Okay? When you look at the northernmost site, what is that? Manda, located in Jammu. Southernmost site, Daimabad, located in Maharashtra. Easternmost site, Alamgirpur, located in Western UP, Meerat. Okay? And the westernmost site, Sutka Gendor, located on the Iran-Pakistan border in Pakistan proper, Balochistan, on the Makran coast. Okay? Achha. Now, a few years back, the UPSC asked a question to uh, that water, which uh, geometrical figure roughly corresponds to the shape of the Harappan civilization. So, tell us. Northernmost, southernmost, easternmost, westernmost, what should it be? Rectangular, square, rhomboid, triangular, circular, what should it be? Triangular. Triangular, Roughly triangular. The idea is that... Where will you get the space here? Anyway, so, let's see. If... Uh, ये इंडिया पाकिस्तान का बॉर्डर हो गया ठीक है एंड मांडा इज ओवर हियर आलमगीरपुर इज ओवर हियर एंड दाइमाबाद इज समवेयर ओवर हियर सुतका गेंडोर इज राइट ऑन द ईरान पाकिस्तान बॉर्डर सो दीस थ्री साइट्स आर ऑलमोस्ट इन द सेम लाइन एंड दिस इज द फाइनल वर्टेक्स ठीक है सो इट वुड बी रफली ट्रायंगुलर लेकिन वो तो यहाँ पे लिखा हुआ है तो आप लोग ने पढ़ के शायद बोल दिया अगर प्रॉब्ली ये नहीं लिखा होता इट वुड हैव बिन डिफिकल्ट तो कीप दीज थिंग्स इन माइंड यहाँ पे दिस इज जस्ट सजेस्टिव यूपीएससी इज नॉट गोइंग टू रिपीट द सेम क्वेश्चन बट द आइडिया इज कि एन के मैप्स को एक बार देख के जरूर जाना इस तरह के भी क्वेश्चन आ सकते हैं नाउ Let us talk about the important sites of the Harappan civilization and the artifacts that have been discovered from here. First site, Mohanjadaro. First thing that you need to know, location of every site. Located where? In Sindh, Larkana district of Sindh, Pakistan. On the banks of which river? The Indus. Second thing you need to know, what are the important discoveries? So, first big discovery, the Great Bath. What was the Great Bath? ये मत बोलना swimming pool था. हाँ, probably used for some kind of ritual bathing, maybe in some religious ceremony. ठीक है? Dimensions have been given here. If you want, you can rectify them. I will not suggest that you do that. ठीक है? It is believed that the Harappans were the first in the world to use burnt bricks. So this is an information of extreme importance that Harappans were the first to use burnt bricks and not only that, they did not use burnt bricks only for making the residential houses of the ruling class or public buildings. Rather, even the homes of the ordinary Harappans were, were made using burnt bricks. Even the roads and streets were paved using burnt bricks. So they were the only contemporary civilization to use burnt bricks on an almost universal scale. Is this clear? It also gives us insights into the advancement of masonry as they had developed the technology to make waterproof surfaces. So this is another important piece of information. Waterproofing ka idea tha inko. Right? Now, although there is some historical debate about this issue, most historians believe that the great bath was used for ritualistic bathing. Clear hai? Yes. This is in meters. Centimeters mein hoga to two find hoga itna chota sa hoga. 11 meters. Nahi nahi. This is the dimension of the entire great bath. Right? So 11 meters long kitna? 
7 meters uh, wide, 2.43 meters deep. Okay. Another important thing to remember about the burnt bricks of the Harappans was the great degree of standardization right now across the entire civilization throughout the entire mature harappan period all the bricks that have been used they are of the same dimension not only that not only do they have the same weight they also have the same proportion so the different sides of the bricks are always in the proportion of 1 is to 2 is to 4 Okay. What does this tell you? That were all of these sites part of different civilizations or the same civilization, same civilization with probably a common governing structure who was overseeing all this standardization as well. Not only this, but there was a great degree of standardization when it came to when it came to the weights and measures so weights and measures ke liye kaun sa system, numerical system use kiya jata tha decimal binary or hexadecimal decimal and hexadecimal both were used theek hai and all the weights and measures were always in the same ratio so This also indicates the mathematical sophistication of the people of this civilization. They were aware of different numeral systems, not only a single one. Next important discovery from Mohanjodaro, the great granary, right? Now, what is the purpose of a granary? Storing of grains. Ye batao, was the economy of the Harappan civilization monetized or not? Monetary currency, metallic currency use karte the ya nahi karte the? Main bata deta hoon, nahi karte the. Thik hai? So in that case, what do you think was the purpose of the granary? Was it simply a store of grains to be used at, an, at a time of emergency or was it something more? It was something more, not only commercial purpose. Grains were the carriers of value, right? Value uh, ko measure karne ke liye grains ka use kiya jayega. And where do you think the state stores its valuables? Kaha pe store karta hai? In the treasury, right? So these granaries were acting as veritable treasuries for the Harappan cities. And how do resources centralize? How do they flow into the treasury? Kaise? What is the only source of state income? Taxation. Right? So, it, it is not the only one, but it is the biggest one. Right? So, the presence of these granaries also indicates the presence of a taxation system. And who has the authority to collect taxes? The state. The sovereign authority. So, it also indicates the presence of a political structure within the Harappan civilization. Take it. Apart from that, a number of other things you can get to know from the Great Granary. Its existence indicates that there was a food surplus because uh, without food surplus, extra grains could not be stored. There must have been some form of civic body which collected the grains. It may also indicate the practice of taxation and may also point toward the practice of emergency planning. Okay? So, Great Broth, Great Granary, kahan se mila hai? Mohan Judaro se. Further, the fossilized grains which have been found from the floor of the Great Granary also tells you about the crop diversity of the Harappan people, right? Further, it also tells you that they must have mastered the art of transportation, transporting large quantities of grain from the fields to the granary, which is situated atop a very tall mound 
so that must also have been perfected right so all these things are indicated by the presence of the great granary another architectural feature discovered from mohanjodaro is a multi pillared assembly hall right what does this indicate it was probably a governance related building so we don't know about the exact nature of the polity of the harappan civilization whether it was a monarchy or republican oligarchy kya tha but it was some kind of meeting hall had it been a monarchy it was probably the place where the king would hold its court uska darbar chalega had it been a republic this was probably acting as a senate or some kind of legislative house for debates and discussions theek okay? hai so it had some kind of political significance that we know then a small figure of a dancing girl has also been discovered made out of which material bronze so bronze dancing figure bronze figurines of a dancing girl has been unearthed and what does this indicate that the harappans had an advanced technology of bronze metallurgy what kind of metal is bronze is it an elemental metal or an alloy it is an alloy of copper and tin so they had expertise over both copper and tin as well plus they knew how to mix these materials in the correct proportion right we all, we are also aware about the technique that was used to make this uh, bronze figurine kaun sa technique use kiya hai lost wax technique in french it is known as the serpard you i don't know the correct pronunciation aap logo ko pata hoga kya hota hai serpard you khair hota hoga ab mujhe to nahi pata hai anyway so what was the lost wax technique kya hota tha नहीं वैक्स का मोल्ड नहीं बनाएंगे सी वॉट एवर शेप यू वॉन्ट वॉट एवर फाइनल शेप यू वॉन्ट ना यू टेक अ ब्लॉक ऑफ वैक्स एंड यू कार दैट यूजिंग अ नाइफ ठीक है उसके बाद आप क्या करोगे यू पैक दर थिंग विद प्लास्टर ऑफ पैरिस let it dry leave a small hole right and then in order to cure the mold and melt the wax you place it inside a bhatti inside a kiln and oven wax will get molten pour it out inside the mold you will get a negative simply pour the molten metal inside break the mold you get your statue theek okay? hai so that is the lost wax technique why lost wax because at the end of the process the wax has been lost theek okay? hai acha it also tells you about the harappan culture and tastes kya kya pata lagta hai the harappan sense of fashion that the harappans valued things such as music dance etc right that probably these dancing girls belong to a class of people who may have been working as prostitutes so this might also indicate the existence of prostitution within the harappan civilization etc right another item that has been discovered a stone bust of a bearded priest right it is a stone bust of a bearded man wearing a robe with a trefoil pattern to aap log ne ho sakta hai ki iska image dekha ho that he is wearing a robe one of his shoulders is bare the other is covered with this robe and it is an embroidered robe right तो इस तरह का पैटर्न बना हुआ है ट्रेफॉइल मींस थ्री लीव्स वाला पैटर्न तो ऐसे इस तरह से बना हुआ है राइट हिज आईज आर हाफ क्लोज एज इफ इन मेडिटेशन राइट ही हैज अ वेरी वेल ग्रूम्ड बियर्ड एंड दैट इज व्हाई ही इज नोन एज द बियर्डेड प्रीस्ट ही इज आल्सो नोन एज दीस्ट किंग Uh, all of this is open to interpretation we don't know whether he was a priest at all whether he was a king or at all or not it just appears from his emotion and expression his the opulence that he was a person of uh, a lot of wealth and probably because of his meditative state he was a priest right his beard is well groomed and he is wearing a fillet on his forehead fillet kya hota hai mangti ka so a circlet of gold probably gold around his head
then from mohanjodaro we also have found evidence of the existence of a well developed cotton industry not only have we found cotton cloth we also have found the tools used for spinning and stitching of cotton cloth spindle whorls and needles theek hai this indicates the existence of a flourishing cotton industry ab ye batao was it a uh, an organized industry or a household industry household industry a cottage industry and how do we know this because the, these uh, things spindles whorls and needles they have all been discovered from the individual houses of ordinary harappans and this was an activity that was undertaken by harappans of all economic backgrounds both rich as well as poor because we have found this from both the large houses as well as the small houses the kinds of materials that were used to make these implements is also going to vary greatly from wood to terracotta to precious materials such as faience shells and corals etc theek okay? hai further we have also discovered the largest collection of seals from mohanjodaro what were the seals they were made out of stettite stettite was a soft river stone and has been found over here theek okay? hai so what was their shape usually square or rectangular dimensions 2 square inches theek okay? hai now were these seals bare or did they have carvings on them carvings which kind of carvings carvings in relief or imbroglio uh, carvings intaglio carvings so these are intaglio carvings intaglio carvings are the carvings that are made by removing material from a surface in order to get the desired shape theek hai so the end result is that aapko ek depressed figure milega and what is a relief carving that instead of uh, having the material carved out you remove the background so that the subject appears to emerge out of the background that is relief carving so if you take out a currency coin and look at the carvings that is an example of relief carving theek hai acha now kya kya hota hai is pe intaglio carvings of script and images both images kiske kiske humans animals plants deities etc example mother goddess seal and the pashupati seal theek hai acha what do you think was the purpose of these seals kyun use kiye jate honge as a medium of exchange so they may have been used as a medium of exchange what else the higher probability is that they were probably used for authenticating for facilitating long distance trade jo naam hai uska seal hai so they would be used to seal certain uh, articles for example you are sending very high quality wine from here to mesopotamia right you don't want anybody to open that seal drink half of it and mix the water in the rest of it so what do you do after you have sealed it you pack certain mud around it and while the mud is still wet you make your own personal seal to make an impression so if that seal is broken the person at the other end knows not to accept it it has been altered so probably it was used to facilitate long distance trade that is the idea theek okay? hai acha now let us talk about each of these seals mother goddess seal and pashupati seal now the mother goddess seal depicts a female deity with a plant emerging from her womb what does this indicate that she is the giver of birth she is a symbol of fertility right so the presence of the fertility cult is indicated by the mother goddess seal and another thing that is shown on this seal 
इज अ मैन अबाउट टू सैक्रीफाइस द वुमेन विद अ नाइफ ठीक है नाउ अर्लियर हिस्टोरियंस बिलीव दैट दिस वॉज एविडेंस ऑफ ह्यूमन सैक्रीफाइस बट मोर रिसेंट हिस्टोरियोग्राफी टेंट्स टू थिंक दैट दिस ह्यूमन सैक्रीफाइस वॉज ओनली सिम्बॉलिक बट द एलिमेंट ऑफ सैक्रीफाइस वॉज डेफिनेटली प्रेजेंट विद इन दी हरप्पन फेथ ठीक है सो इट ऑल्सो इंडिकेट द पॉप्युलैरिटी ऑफ द सैक्रीफाइस कल्ट and what do you think is the purpose of of sacrifice to propitiate the gods to appease the gods so that you are offering something to the gods they will become happy and offer you something back in return there is an element of transaction involved over here a reciprocal relationship hai theek hai so what does this tell you about the nature of the harappan religion was it highly philosophical or was it materialistic materialistic probably religious worship was done in order to gain something in return okay so it also indicates the existence of a materialistic religion okay then over here you have the pashupati seal right now why is it known as the pashupati seal because it shows a human figure with multiple faces and a horned head dress sitting in a yogic position and he is surrounded by animals kon kon se animals राइनोसरस एलिफेंट टाइगर एंड बफलो ठीक है अच्छा बिलो हिज थ्रोन यू हैव टू डियर एक यहां पर एक यहां पर इधर वाला टूट के अलग हो गया है राइट एंड वॉट इज दर्ड फॉर एनिमल्स इन संस्कृत पशु एंड ही अपियर्स टू बी दॉर्ड द गॉड ऑफ एनिमल्स दैट इज वाई पशुपति who was the first archaeologist to study this piece of archaeology john marshall ne sabse pehle isko study kiya and he referred to it as proto shiva why proto shiva what are the similarities between shiva and this particular figure shiva is also the lord of animals he is also considered to be the adi yogi So, because he is seated in a yogic position, but uh, many recent historians have said that probably categorizing him as proto Shiva would be a leap that is too far. Probably that is inaccurate. We cannot say for sure the real significance of this deity or whether Shiva was later influenced or inspired by this particular deity or not. Okay. So, ये तो हो गया. About Mohan Jodaro. Next we have Harappa. Where is Harappa? Once again in Pakistan, Punjab, Montgomery district, on the banks of which river? The Ravi. Now at Mohan Jodaro we had discovered a single great granary. Over here we have not discovered a great granary, but granaries are definitely present. right we have two rows of six small cells acting as granaries each so total 12 granaries have been found once again significance is going to be the same as the great granary then we have also discovered a male torso made out of red sandstone right unique part about this particular stone sculpture is that it has ball and socket joints right so it does not have its limbs or head there are no head no arms no feet but at the neck at the shoulders at the pelvis you have ball and socket joints what does this tell you that this was probably used as a doll as a children's toy it had moving parts okay 
then we also have evidence of different burial practices such as direct burial urn burial coffin burial partial burial etc what does this indicate that there was a multiplicity of faiths even today the practitioners of different religions dispose of their dead in different manners all of them have their own rituals for example most muslims bury their dead without a coffin most christians in a coffin hindus burn their dead the buddhists bury their dead right so these are the kinds of funerary practices so this indicates the presence of different faiths then we have kalibangan third site where is it located rajasthan specific, specifically hanumangar district on the banks of the dried up river ghaggar right what is the literal meaning of kalibangan kali is black and bangan is bangles why the name kali bangan because from here a number of black bangles were discovered so in the craft production industry of the harappans we can also identify geographic specialization okay there were certain centers which specialized in the manufacture of certain craft products for example kali bangan specialized in the manufacture of bangles okay acha other important discoveries from here we find the evidence of pre harappan culture as well what does that tell you that this was a site that was occupied continuously from the pre harappan to the mature harappan period so an entire and continuous unbroken chain of stratigraphic evidence proving the theory of gradual origin can be found from kalibangan other important discovery fire altars what does this indicate the presence of fire worship probably some sacrificial cult was also popular and finally we have evidence of a plowed field a field that was tilled that has been found from here how has it been discovered intact kya hua hoga what do you think now one of the theories to explain the destruction of the harappan civilization was frequent and intense flooding so probably the farmer must have prepared his field just before the sowing season he must have even planted the seeds waited for the floods but the floods were too intense he must have had to desert his farm and along with the floods a lot of sediment alluvium was also deposited and from season to season more and more alluvium kept on getting deposited over this field once the excavation of was done we have evidence of this plowed field okay so although we have discovered a plowed field have we discovered any plow hal mila hai kahin se nahi mila hai nahi banavali se terracotta replica of a plow mila hai a plow has not been found what does this indicate that it was probably made out of some perishable material maybe wood okay <laughs> are you guys following me or not kya ho raha hai kya dikkat hai koi dikkat nahi hai aap log bade blank expression ke sath dekh rahe ho what is the problem nahi samajh mein aa raha hai na chamak raha hai na sabko good नेक्स्ट वी हैव लोथल कहां पे लोकेटेड है गुजरात में ऑन द बैंक्स ऑफ द रिवर भोगवा मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट डिस्कवरी फ्रॉम लोथल अ मैन मेड डॉक यार्ड मेड ऑफ बर्न ब्रिक्स व्हाट डज इट इंडिकेट ओवरसीज एक्टिविटी सॉरी ओवरसीज कॉन्टैक्ट और मैरिटाइम सी फेयरिंग एक्टिविटी then we have also discovered certain seals from mesopotamia what does this indicate that some kind of contact must have definitely existed 
we also have rice husk indicating what rice cultivation was happening in this region and the practice of double burial that means one grave two bodies what does this indicate sati pata bhi ho sakta hai right ki patni mari pati ne aatmahatya kar li see the idea is we do not know for sure probably what it indicates was the existence of some monogamous practices that those people who had committed to remaining together in life would also remain together in death theek hai so this is the idea next site kaun sa hai chanhuddaro where sind on the banks of the river indus now one thing to remember about this site is that it is an industrial site it specialized in the manufacture of beads theek hai kaise pata lagta hai humko factories of beads and bangles have been found over here so these are dedicated structures where workmen used to establish their workshops have their tools bring the raw material fashion the finished product and then uh, ship it off to yahan pe humko all the stages mein raw material milta hai processed unprocessed fully processed we also have discovered the tools so this was a factory site second important thing to remember that uh, it had only a single level of occupation while talking about harappan town planning you are going to see that harappan towns usually had two levels of occupation an upper town and a lower town lekin yahan pe is tarah ka distinction nahi hai it has a single level of occupation no surrounding wall we also have the evidence of the use of cosmetics in the form of lipstick from chanhuddaro theek hai ye ho gaya chanhuddaro then another quite interesting site dhola veera where is it located gujarat on the banks of the river luni kach mein hai theek hai important discoveries first of all a huge sign board has been discovered consisting of 10 symbols of the harappan script what does it say we don't know because we don't know how to decipher this script second since kach even back then was located in an arid region therefore an elaborate system of water harvesting has been discovered it is it consists of a number of different layers of interconnected tanks and reservoirs theek hai tanks reservoirs drains and channels third important thing to remember that unlike the rest of the harappan civilization where burnt brick was used as the universal material of construction at dhola veera what has been used stone has been used burnt brick has not been used theek hai was the primary building material instead of burnt bricks acha then like chanhuddaro dhola veera also is an exception to the rule of two levels of settlement at chanhuddaro how many levels were there one level here three levels are there citadel middle town and lower town that is upper town middle town and lower town and another important discovery at dhola veera was a stadium theek hai so these are the important discoveries at dhola veera next important site rakhi gadhi kahan pe hai haryana on the banks of the ghaggar unique features it is the largest site to have been excavated till now in the entire harappan civilization we also have evidence of an animal sacrifice pit how do we know that animals are sacrificed over here because of the butchered bones of several animals theek okay? hai we also have a fire altar here and in place of using clay burned bricks we have 
terracotta bricks right and finally we have a dna study which proves the independent origin of the harappan civilization which theory of harappan origin does it disprove aryan origin is disproved by this because of the absence of which particular gene r1 a1 gene theek hai there is independent origin the people who were living in this region from the very beginning so these people gradually evolved from the neolithic phase to the bronze age stage okay so that is the idea we do not know for sure who they are but for that also another study has been done right uh dasyus dasas kon hai these are the words that we get from the rigved these are the terms that are used for the original inhabitants of this region who were defeated by the aryans right and they were then enslaved but uh, we are still unsure about their exact identity a dna analysis that was done about uh, on the ancestry of indians of north india south india eastern india western india har jagah pe kiya so we find that the people who inhabit the northwestern portion of the subcontinent north india and uh, the southern india all of them share a number of genetic markers so it has been a very complex history of human migration and it cannot be easily said that uh, exactly wahi dasyus the who were the originators of the harappan civilization or not theek hai that is the idea that is the most recent evidence that we have dna evidence right then we have certain other sites such as uh, ropad surkotra and banavali so these you can study on your own next topic within the harappan civilization harappan town planning theek okay? hai now एक मेन्स में क्वेश्चन आया था जीएस में इन 2014 तो व्हाट एक्सटेंट हैज हरप्पन हैज द अर्बन प्लानिंग एंड कल्चर ऑफ द इंडस वैली सिविलाइजेशन प्रोवाइडेड इनपुट्स टू प्रेजेंट डे अर्बनाइजेशन ऑल दो दिस इज प्रिलिम्स मास्टर प्रोग्राम बट लेट अस डिस्कस दिस एंटायर टॉपिक इन द फ्रेमवर्क ऑफ द आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन तो फर्स्ट थिंग यू नीड टू नो दैट द हरप्पन प्लान देयर सिटीज ऑन विच पैटर्न ग्रिड और चेस बोर्ड पैटर्न वॉट डज दिस मीन दैट द रोड्स एंड स्ट्रीट्स वर कंप्लीटली स्ट्रेट एंड इंटरसेक्टेड ईच अदर एट राइट एंगल्स दीज वर ओरिएंटेड इन विच डायरेक्शंस द ईस्ट वेस्ट नॉर्थ साउथ डायरेक्शंस ऑलवेज ठीक है सो दिस इज वन थिंग दैट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर What are the advantages to this kind of planning? क्या advantage मिलता है That suppose you have a city which is based on a linear pattern. That means there is one main road and a number of connecting streets, right? You have to go from point A to B. And रास्ते में बैल गाड़ी का चक्का निकल गया तो then you are stuck, right? you are going to miss your matinee show with your girlfriend thappad padega pakka that is the idea so congestion can take place over here right but in that other scenario what is going to happen you have a number of alternative routes theek okay? hai further in this scenario what is going to happen when the wind blows from this direction to this direction all the dust the garbage that has been accumulated in all of these streets that is going to come and accumulate right on the main street right and in that other scenario the wind is going to blow from one direction to the other no obstruction it will blow out of the city so self cleaning mechanism ka fayda milega right and even present day cities such as delhi and chandigarh also follow a similar pattern acha second feature of harappan town planning kya hai that they had two levels of settlements a citadel and a lower town citadel or 
upper town that was fortified and a lower town that was unfortified. What was the purpose of this distinction? Yeah, hierarchy. Which kind of hierarchy? Political and economic hierarchy, right? Ruling class would be living in the fortified settlement, the common people living in the other areas, right? So, this kind of differentiation can you find in present day cities? Abhi bhi dikhta hai, for example, Latians Delhi and the rest of Delhi, right? A unique feature of Harappan cities was their fully covered drainage system, right? So, this was unique in the entire world for that period of time. There was only one small Greek island which had, uh, which even came close to this kind of drain sophistication. Kiske baare mein baat kar rahe hain? It is a matter of dispute between Turkey and Greece these days. Cyprus, right? So, Cyprus may be similar drainage pattern tha nowhere else in the world during this period. So, Harappans were first in the world to make such drains and this is a feature of all well-planned cities. Achha. Now, along the roads, at regular intervals in the Harappan cities, you will find dustbins, waste baskets, waste pits at regular intervals. So, this was done in order to keep the city clean and hygienic. Is this feature of present urbanization, present urban planning? Yes, it is. Right. Another important feature of the Har Harappan civilization was street lighting at regular intervals. Now, this is not only a security requirement, but it has also shown to have an impact on the socio -econ uh, so society and economy of the communities which are served in this manner. Okay? So, crimes are lesser, people are more educated in those areas where street lighting is provided. Right? Then, the Harappans also constructed shared community spaces such as assembly halls, such as stadiums, such as meeting places, markets, etc. And these kinds of structures are essential parts of present day cities as well. Then, the Harappans had houses of different sizes indicating what? The presence of a socio-economic hierarchy. Do you find this feature in present day cities also? Yes. And in the Harappan cities, all the doors and windows used to be used to open from the back, used to open from the rear, never from the front. Why? Huh, it would lead to congestion if it opens right onto the street, right? Do you find these elements in present day cities? Yes, some cities such as Chandigarh, right? There's a fine if you open the uh, door or the gate on the front of your home, at least in some locations of Chandigarh, okay? So, these are the important elements of town planning. Kya kya dekha hai hamne? Grid pattern or covered drainage or two levels of occupation or waste pits, uh, street lighting, what else? Shared community spaces, what else? Doors and opens open at the rear, etc. So, will you remember these? Clear hai? Now, talking about the material life or the economic life of the Harappan people. So, here we have to talk about their agriculture, their craft production, their trade and commerce. Okay? Talking about their agriculture. Now, how many crops did the Harappans used to cultivate? One or two? Two different crops. A, a Rabi crop and a Kharif crop. So, they understood the correlation between different crop varieties and the seasons. Okay? So, Harappans grew two seasonal crops, summer and winter and cultivated crops such as Wheat, barley, rice, millet, mustard, dates, watermelon, sesame, etc. 
वॉट इज मिसिंग पल्सेस का कोई एविडेंस नहीं मिला है क्वाइट सरप्राइजिंगली ठीक है सो देर इज नो एविडेंस ऑफ पल्सेस डिड दी हरप्पन यूज टू प्लाउ देयर सॉइल और नॉट प्लाउ देयर फील्ड और नॉट येस सो टिलिंग वॉज डन बाय दी हरप्पन फ्रॉम वेयर डू वी फाइंड दी एविडेंस काली बंगन एंड बनावली वॉट डू वी फाइंड फ्रॉम काली बंगन अ प्लाउड फील्ड एंड वॉट अबाउट बनावली क्या मिला है टेराकॉट है रेप्लिका ऑफ अ प्लाउ प्रोबेबली अ टॉय राइट What kind of irrigation did the Harappans practice? Flood irrigation, well irrigation, or canal irrigation? Flood irrigation was practiced. ठीक है? Not canal or well irrigation. Now there is one particular site known as Shortogai. This is located in Afghanistan, where we have found evidence of the existence of canals that were dug during this period. but this is not a proper harappan site what is it it is a trading outpost theek hai so harappa had overland trade with a number of external civilizations china se central asia se west asia se etc so we do not know for sure whether this element was present due to harappan influence or due to foreign influence upsc has already asked this question that was did we have any evidence of canal irrigation upsc in his answer ki has clearly told it told us that nahi mila hai aapka bhi answer kya hai canal irrigation tha ya nahi tha nahi tha is this clear chaliye now <clears throat> they practiced intensive agriculture and had large agricultural base since their entire civilization was based on the guarantee of a large surplus what is the difference between intensive and subsistence agriculture subsistence agriculture is for fulfilling your own personal needs intensive agriculture is to maximize production to get a large surplus theek hai so they also used animal manure as what as fertilizer theek hai so this is something that you can add next we come to the metal industry under the harappans what were the metals that the harappans used commonly and what was that important metal that was not used by the harappans kaun sa metal nahi use karte the harappans iron was not used by them iron in fact emerged on the indian subcontinent much later when did it emerge during the later vedic age theek hai from 1000 bce onwards all right so harappans used copper gold silver lead and tin to make tools weapons ornaments toys etc were they aware of the art of alloy making yes kaun sa alloy banate the bronze alloy theek hai However, they did not have any knowledge of iron. तो so, iron के बारे में नहीं पता था Then we come to the crafts production activities. Number वन we have pottery. ठीक है Do you think any improvements were seen in pottery from the Neolithic and Calcolithic periods to this period? Yes, the Neolithic and Calcolithic pottery. What were they used for? 
वर दे यूटिलिटेरियन और डेकोरेटिव यूटिलिटेरियन ओनली हरप्पन वुड मेक पॉटरी दैट इज बोथ यूटिलिटेरियन एज वेल एज डेकोरेटिव इट वुड बी ऑफ फाइनर क्वालिटी बेटर एग्जीक्यूशन एज वेल ठीक है the characteristic pottery of this period what was it known as black, black and red ware theek hai so they were expert potters and made painted fire baked wheel turned pottery known as black and red ware next we have terracotta figurines now terracotta figurines are an expression of popular art during the harappan civilization how would you differentiate popular art from elite art kya difference hoga which is going to be more frequently discovered popular art or elite art popular art which is going to be less valuable popular art which is going to have higher quality elite art theek hai so terracotta figurines were found from almost all across the harappan civilization what kind of figurines were made were they secular in nature or religious both secular as well as religious theek hai so we have examples of terracotta figurine of the mother goddess the horned deity Oh, sorry, horned mask of a deity from Harappa, and at the same time we also have examples of toy carts and whistles. ठीक है? Now the Harappans were experts in jewelry making as well. We already have seen examples of beads and bangles. But once again, these were items of elite culture, elite art. They could be afforded only by a select section of Harappans. but they definitely must have acted as status symbols during the harappan civilization and in a materialistic civilization in a materialistic culture the aspirational class wo kya koshish karega to follow the trends to follow the fashion that has been set by the trend setters of the society so but they could not afford that kind of jewelry what are they going to do they are going to make imitation jewelry of which material of terracotta so terracotta was also used to make imitation jewelry theek hai acha next we also have tone sculptures ab ye batao will these come into the category of popular art or elite art high culture ya folk culture high culture why first of all because they are much more valuable a lot more effort has gone into making them and they are much more rare right so it is believed that these are examples of a high art of elite culture which kind of stones sandstone grey stone limestone stateite etc theek hai examples kya hai the bust of a bearded priest from mohanjodaro male torso of red sandstone from harappa and a male dancing figure which john marshall called nataraj from harappa as well theek hai then we also have evidence of metal sculpture one important example we have already seen kaun sa dancing girl apart from that a bronze bull from kalibangan and two figures of copper a bird and a dog from lothal theek hai and finally we have beads and ornaments so some ornaments such as necklaces armlets fillets finger rings etc they were worn both by men and women but there were other articles of jewelry that were worn only by women such as girdles earrings anklets etc theek hai 
Harappans used to wear ornaments made out of semi precious stones, precious stones, corals, shells, and even terracotta, apart from a number of precious metals such as gold, silver, bronze, etc. Another important activity appears to have been seal making. So, we have already seen what seals are. क्या होते थे किस पर्पस के लिए यूज किए जाते थे दीज हैड कार्विंग ऑफ बोथ ह्यूम एनिमल्स एंड प्लांट एज वेल एज स्क्रिप्ट नाउ लेट एस टॉक अबाउट दी हरप्पन स्क्रिप्ट डू वी नो हाउ टू रीड इट और नॉट इट इज अनडिसाइफर्ड इज इट एल्फाबेटिकल और पिक्टोग्राफिक पिक्टोग्राफिक स्क्रिप्ट दैट मीन्स इंस्टेड ऑफ एल्फाबेट्स और लेटर्स symbols are used to convey meanings right and uh, it consists of more than 400 symbols right more than 396 symbols what was the direction in which it was written right to left then left to right then right to left once again so this kind of writing is known as boustrophedon style of writing theek hai ये पता है कि कैसे पता लगा दैट इट वाज रिटन फ्रॉम इन दिस डायरेक्शन कैसे हा ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द स्पेसिंग ठीक है वेयर हैज द हरप्पन स्क्रिप्ट बीन फाउंड फ्रॉम फ्रॉम सील्स पॉट्स पॉट शर्ट दैट मींस द ब्रोकन रिमेन्स ऑफ पॉट साइन बोर्ड एटसेट्रा व्हाट डज ऑल ऑफ दिस इंडिकेट That these were probably read by ordinary Harappans on a daily basis. That means rate of literacy must have been high, right? Then we come to the Harappan trade and commerce. what was the scope of the harappan trade was it local regional or international teeno levels pe trade karte the and this trade happened in large volumes it was quite expensive what were the preferred route land route river route or sea route all of them theek hai so over land also over sea also and along the rivers also harappans used to trade what were the important items of export cotton cloth or beads what else wood grains bricks etc and what were the important items of import precious metals mostly bullion gold silver lead etc theek hai what was the balance of trade like who was it in favor of the harappans or the others harappans that means the volume of import was lesser than the volume of export theek hai net in income was taking place all right acha <clears throat> now from the mesopotamian records also we can prove that mesopotamians had trading relations with the harappans mesopotamian records have referred to harappa by the name of meluha theek hai and they mention that meluha had trading relations with dilmun and magan as well apart from some other cities such as susa and ur uh, susa was a major city in iran back then and ur in mesopotamia theek hai dilmun was the mesopotamian name for bahrain and magan was the name for oman ठीक है एंड फाइनली वी कम टू 
the Harappan faith and the Harappan religion. Right? Uh, what do you know or what can you say about uh, the characteristics of the Harappan religion? Did they practice animal worship or not? Did they practice nature worship or not? Karte the or not? Karte the. What were those things which let you know that they probably worship nature? Kaise pata? On the basis of archaeological evidence. For example, from the seals, we have evidence of the cult of animal worship. We also have some proto Shiva, Pashupati like figure. We also have the idea of animal worship because the bull is the most commonly found symbol on the Harappan seals. Okay? So, like most other ancient people, they were also nature worshippers. Images of different animals and plants have been found from seals. The most prominent being the humped bull, unicorn and snakes. Further, the discovery of the Pashupati seal also indicates the cult of nature worship. Another important feature of the Harappan religion that they believed in the fertility cult. Which kind of fertility symbols did the Harappans worship? Male or female or both? Both male and female fertility symbols were worshipped. Both the lingam, the phallus as well as the yoni, the womb. The phallus worship and yoni worship was common. The most significant representative of this cult was the mother goddess, believed to have been the goddess of fertility. Was the Harappan religion materialistic or philosophical in nature? Materialistic in nature. What was the purpose of Harappan worship? Kya tha? It was material gain. They wanted something. Kya chahte the? Prosperity, material gain, more children. And they also worshipped out of fear. They wanted to protect what they had. Why were they afraid? Because their existence was dependent upon natural phenomena. So they would ask for blessings for, from nature. They would ask for good rains, frequent floods, but not excessive flooding, etc. Things like that. So people prayed for the fulfillment of material desires such as crops, wealth, safety and children. The spiritual element with emphasis on salvation was not dominant. Okay? So the ideas such as salvation, oneness with God, closeness to God, etc., these things you will not find. Achha. Did the Harappans believe in the concept of life after death or not? Yes. How do we know this? Which kind of burial practices? That along with the dead bodies, certain important items were also buried. Such as utensils, ornaments, tools. What is the purpose? That in the afterlife, these will be useful for that person. Okay? So on the basis of the presence of grave goods, you can say that they had the concept of life after death. Next, the discovery of amulets also indicates the presence of superstitious beliefs and practices. What is an amulet? Tabis hota hai, amulets, totems, etc. They are usually worn as protective devices, right? To spiritually protect you from some bad spirits, etc. So, this kind of idea was also present. Now, what about the element of idol worship? Was it present or not? Now, this has been a matter of debate. Okay? Have idols been found? That is the figures of religious deities. Have they been found? Yes, definitely mile hai. Mother goddess ke mile hai. For example, we also find representations of different deities on the seals also. 
बट वर दीज आर्टिकल्स ऑफ वर्शिप और नॉट दैट इज अ डिफरेंट मैटर राइट यूजली आइडल वर्शिप leaves behind an archaeological trace in the form of kaise even now how are idols worshiped kaise worship karte hain offering or some tikka is done some incense is burnt agarbatti dhoop batti etc right however no mark of any kind of vermilion no marking is found no burn marks have been found etc so although idols were present the presence of idol worship that is still suspect so if there is a question that harappans had religious idols what will be your answer yes did they have idol worship we do not know for sure theek hai nahi pata hai hame acha now although uh, religion formed a dominant part of the harappan culture but it was the uh, still a secular society what do you understand by a secular society <coughs> a society where the state did not have its own religion the state did not undertake the patronization or the promotion of any particular religion how do you know this because of the presence of multiple faiths at the same time in different harappan cities indicated by the multiplicity of the burial practices theek hai agar state ka koi ek religion hota would it have tolerated the existence of these other faiths probably not acha secondly the idea of religious worship was not a public affair for the harappans rather it was a private affair how do we know this due to the absence of any dedicated religious structures any religious shrines or temples aisa koi bhi structure humko nahi mila hai that is why it was probably a private affair right how did the harappans worship probably by offering simple sacrifice to various gods and goddesses where out in the open in public spaces or in the privacy of their homes within the privacy of their homes and we have definite example to prove this also definite evidence to prove this as well from many of the harappan homes small votive tanks have been found also known as donative vessels Now, among you those of you who come from practicing hindu family is ghar ke andar mandir hota hai puja vagera hota hai right and how do you make offerings kaise karte ho a little bit of grain a little bit of haldi etc in a small plate right so wo jo small plate hai that is a donative vessel it is meant for god so isi tarah ka ek small vessel roughly 4 to 6 inches in dimension made of clay quite shallow that was probably used to offer these sacrifices very simple ones some uh, rice some wheat some food grains some salt sugar whatever and probably you would burn this in order to propitiate the gods and this was found where out in the open or within the houses within the houses so it was a private affair theek hai do we have any evidence of a fire cult yes we have discovered fire altars from several sites such as kali bangan harappa lothal etc right similarly we also have evidence of water worship kahan se 
ग्रेट बात मोहन जुदारो ठीक है सो इन वन लाइन कैन यू कैप्चर द नेचर ऑफ द हरप्पन रिलीजन इट वॉज सेक्युलर कॉस्मोपोलिटन ओपन एंड मटीरियलिस्टिक ठीक है सो दैट वॉज द नेचर ऑफ द हरप्पन रिलीजन नाउ लेट एस लुक एट सम ऑफ द क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दिस टॉपिक first question which one of the following animals was not represented on the seals and terracotta art of the harappan culture cow nahi tha theek hai so correct answer is a cow next question regarding the indus valley civilization consider the following statements one it was predominantly a secular civilization and the religious element though present did not dominate the scene and second during this period cotton was used for manufacturing textiles in india which is correct both of them are correct theek hai so correct answer c next question which of the following characterizes the people of the indus civilization one they possessed great palaces and temples okay they worshiped both male and female deities they employed horse drawn chariots in warfare which of these are correct b two only why is the first one incorrect no temples theek okay? hai why is the third one incorrect no horse drawn chariots theek okay? hai in fact the harappans probably had not domesticated the horse also in fact ye upsc already question pooch chuka hai probably aage aapko mil bhi jayega next question match list 1 and list 2 ancient site and the archaeological finding lothal se kya mila hai dockyard kalibangan se plowed field dhola vira inscription comprising 10 large sized signs and banavali terracotta replica of a plow to so, karo match b नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन अच्छा पेलियोलिथिक एज से कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट इन कॉन्टेक्स्ट ऑफ एंशियंट इंडियन हिस्ट्री नंबर वन द पेलियोलिथिक एज वॉज स्प्रेड इन ऑल पार्ट ऑफ द सब कॉन्टिनेंट टू पेलियोलिथिक मैन यूज टूल्स मेड ऑफ हार्ड रॉक कॉल्ड कॉडजाइट टू ओनली फर्स्ट वन इज इन करेक्ट वाई कहा कहा नहीं ऑक्यूपाई करता था नॉर्दर्न प्लेन्स को ठीक है नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन मैच लिस्ट वन विद लिस्ट टू एंड सेलेक्ट द करेक्ट आंसर्स यूजिंग द कोड्स गिवन बिलो फेज ऑफ स्टोन एज कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ टूल्स अपर मिडिल लोअर पेल्यूलिथिक अपर पेल्यूलिथिक का ब्लेड टूल्स मिडिल पेलियोलिथिक फ्लेक लोअर पेलियोलिथिक फोर टूल्स करेक्ट आंसर बी वन थ्री टू माइक्रोलिथ किस पीरियड का मीजोलिथिक का एंड व्हाट अबाउट न्यूलिथिक न्यू काइंड ऑफ टूल्स इमर्ज सेल्ट ठीक है again match uh, list 1 with list 2 culture and characteristics pre harappan early harappan mature harappan and late harappan
प्रीहरप्पन nomadic people began to have a settled life early harappan transition from rural to urban life mature harappan elaborate town planning and urban features and late harappan decline of a civilization 3 4 1 2 kaun sa b again match these sites and the rivers mohan judaro indus kalibangan gaggar lothal bhogwa and harappa ravi answer c c ठीक है सो दीज आर द क्वेश्चन विच आर रेलिवेंट फॉर दी हरप्पन सिविलाइजेशन एंड दी स्टोन एज right next we have to talk about the vedic age right now vedic age can be broadly divided into two phases the early and the later vedic ages early vedic age is also known as the rig vedic age theek okay? hai why because the only source to learn about the early vedic age is the rig ved the other three vedas kon kon se hain Samved, Yajurved, and Atharved. They both, they all belong to the later Vedic period. All right. Now, first thing before we learn about the early Vedic age, let us talk about the Vedic literature. Now, the entire corpus of Vedic literature consists of four Vedas. All know the names: Rig Ved. Samved, Yajurved, and Atharvved, right? But uh, each of the Vedas consists of four parts. Okay? These are the Samhita, Brahmana, Aranyaka, and the Upanishad. The Samhita is the raw text of the Veda. It is the compilation of hymns. So, Rig Vedic Samhita. What is that going to be? A compilation of hymns dedicated to various gods and goddesses. Samved Samhita is going to be a compilation of hymns dedicated to gods and goddesses, and so on. Every Ved has a procedural text known as a Brahmana. Now, along with the chanting of hymns, you were also supposed to perform certain certain sacrifices, and those sacrifices have to be performed in accordance with a prescribed ritual. So, the Brahmanas contained what detailed descriptions of rituals and sacrifices. Okay, sure. Then we have the Aranyakas. The word Aranya. in sanskrit what does it mean forest so these are forest books right and who goes into the forest to meditate rishis muni sanyasis right and after this meditation they try to explore the philosophical reasons behind the rituals that have been described in the brahmanas whether they are valid or invalid so they try to investigate the philosophical basis of the rituals in the brahmanas in the sacrifices and finally we have the upanishads 
ऑल्सो नोन एज दी वेदांत दैट मीन्स दी एंड ऑफ दी वेदा सिंस इट इज एट दी लास्ट देयर फोर वेदांत ठीक है दीज आर वर्क ऑफ प्योर फिलोसफी इन विच दी फोकस ऑफ द इंटेलेक्चुअल इंक्वायरी इज मेटाफिजिक्स वॉट इज मेटाफिजिक्स द नेचर ऑफ द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन मैन एंड गॉड वेयर दीज लर्नेड पीपल हैव ट्राइड टू आंसर द क्वेश्चन अबाउट द मीनिंग ऑफ ह्यूमन एग्जिस्टेंस वॉट इज द नेचर ऑफ द यूनिवर्स वॉट इज गॉड वॉट आर हिज पावर्स वॉट इज हिज मिशन फॉर अस वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ आर सोल what is going to happen after death is there any life or not and if there is then what is our ultimate objective whether this world is real or the next world is real and if none of them are real or both of them are real then how do we reconcile our existence with this fact how do we end the cycle of birth and rebirth attain salvation ye sab kahan pe investigate kiya gaya hai उपनिषद में इज दिस मच क्लियर अच्छा ना वेदिक लिटरेचर फॉल्स इन टू दैटेगरी ऑफ श्रुति लिटरेचर लिटरल मीनिंग ऑफ श्रुति हर्ड ठीक है समथिंग दैट यू हैव हर्ड ऑल राइट सो वेदिक लिटरेचर फॉल्स इन टू दैटेगरी ऑफ a revealed work something that has been revealed directly by god to these meditative personalities to these mahapurushas theek hai so what is the source of the vedas is it human or divine divine and that is why for practicing hindus the vedas their logic is considered to be perfect they are regarded to be infallible in nature is this much clear acha the vedas are considered to be revealed works of divine origin now one thing that should be kept in mind is that they were composed during the vedic period but compiled much later what is the meaning of this composed during the vedic period compiled later ha composition means the conception of the work that it was conceived during the vedic period compilation means to write it down and collect all the writings in a collected work that was done much after the end of the vedic period theek hai so they were composed during the vedic period but compiled later and how were they transmitted from generation to generation before they were written down they were transmitted orally theek hai now you remember the four vedas the four parts of the vedas kon kon se samhitas brahmanas aranyakas and upanishads the only work which can be attributed to the early vedic age is the samhita of the rigved theek hai the rest of the vedic literature was composed when during the early vedic age or later vedic age during the later vedic age so only the rig vedic samhita was composed during the early vedic age while the rest of the vedic corpus was composed during the later vedic age so when we are talking about the rig vedic period what is the only source of inquiry that we have the samhita of the rigved and what about the upanishads associated with the rigved wo sab later vedic brahmanas aranyakas of rigved later vedic period ka theek hai acha then we also have a class of literature known as the पोस्ट वेदिक लिटरेचर यहां पे क्या क्या आएगा धर्मशास्त्र 
पुराण्स वेदांगाज उपवेदाज निबंधाज एंड एपिक्स वॉट आर दी धर्मशास्त्रास दीज आर एंशियंट इंडियन लॉ बुक्स गिवेन बाय एंशियंट ज्यूरिस्ट दे वर रिटर्न इन ऑर्डर टू रेग्युलेट द बिहेवियर ऑफ इंडिविजुअल्स इन दी सोसाइटी ठीक है टू गिव अ क्लियर डिमार्केशन ऑफ वॉट इज करेक्ट वॉट इज नॉट करेक्ट अच्छा पुराण क्या है These are stories and legends associated with individual gods, such as Shiv Puran, Vishnu Puran, Bhagavat Puran, Parvati Puran, etc. Right? Vedangas. What are these? These are the limbs of the Veda. You can consider them to be like the operating manuals of the Veda. Right? so the vedas are what are a collection of hymns which are supposed to be recited at the time of the performance of rituals now in order to ensure that your pronunciation is correct you need the correct pronunciation you need the correct grammar to ensure that the geometry of your sacrificial pit of your havan kund is correct you also need some jyotish gyan so all of that you will get through these vedangas what are the upvedas these are ha huh, these were added to the vedas afterwards these are further commentaries or further additions to the vedas they deal with specific subjects that are associated or that are already dealt with in the vedas in greater details nibandhas what are these these are essays these are commentaries that are written on specific subjects in the vedas and epics kisko bolte hain the mahabharat and ramayan right so once again these are legendary tales about the exploits of various deities various gods they were all compiled after the vedic age ended and they don't fall into the category of shruti literature rather they fall into the category of smriti literature what is the meaning of smriti memory theek hai the literal meaning of smriti is memory so these are works which are supposed to have been memorized by various saints in a meditative state jab meditate kar rahe the then all of this knowledge came from within their conscience they held on to their memory and then related it to their followers who later wrote it all down so what is the source of smriti literature is it divine or human human right तो इसको भी इनफेलेबल मानेंगे या नहीं मानेंगे दिस इज नॉट कंसिडर्ड इनफेलेबल राइट दस दे हैव अ ह्यूमन ओरिजिन एंड लैक द अथॉरिटी ऑफ द वेदर्स दे कवर वेरियस सब्जेक्ट सच एज लॉ एंड सेस्ट्रल हिस्ट्री ऑफ किंग्स एंड डायनेस्टीज स्टोरीज अबाउट डेटीज ट्रीटाइज ऑन द वेदर्स कॉमेंट्रीज ऑन धर्म कर्म एंड द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन गॉड एंड मैन ठीक है So, ये हो गया वेदिक एंड पोस्ट वेदिक लिटरेचर दिस इज दी फर्स्ट बेसिक डिफ्रेंशिएशन देन फर्स्ट लेटेस्ट टॉक अबाउट द ऋग्वेद एंड देन वी कैन टॉक अबाउट द पॉलिटी इकोनॉमी द ऑक्यूपेशन द सोसाइटी रिलीजन एटसेट्रा ऑफ द ऋग्वेदिक पीरियड नाउ what do the people who have been mentioned in the rigved refer to them themselves as kya naam bolte hain aapne liye they call themselves the aryas right what is the literal meaning of arya it means noble right while the word ved is derived from the root word ved meaning to know so ved ka matlab knowledge right the rig ved is a good source for the socio economic and political lives of the early aryans 
सो वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट विच टाइम पीरियड रफली 1500 टू 1000 थाउजेंड बी सी इट इज दस्ट बुक इन इंडिया कंपोज बिटवीन फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड टू वन थाउजेंड बी सी बट इट वॉज कंपाइल्ड मच लेटर इट इज कंसिडर्ड टू बी अवील्ड वर्क ऑफ डिवाइन ओरिजिन श्रुति लिटरेचर और स्मृति लिटरेचर श्रुति लिटरेचर वॉट इज द लैंग्वेज वेदिक संस्कृत दिस इज डिस्टिंग फ्रॉम क्लासिकल संस्कृत What is the difference between Vedic and classical Sanskrit, or a classical language and a pre-classical language? Classical language के grammar के rules, syntax के rules, all of these have been formalized. Whereas a pre-classical language is yet to enter its literary phase. It exists as a spoken language. बट प्रॉबली डज नॉट हैव अज बॉडी ऑफ लिटरेचर ठीक है सो इन ऑर्डर टू अटेन क्लासिकल स्टेटस इट शुड नॉट ओनली हैव अ रिच बॉडी ऑफ लिटरेचर बट ऑल्सो वेल फॉर्मलाइज रूल्स गवर्निंग इट्स ग्रामर सिंटैक्स वोकैबलरी एटसेट्रा ठीक है अच्छा द ऋग्वेद इज डिवाइडेड इन टू टेन बुक्स नोन एज मंडलाज ठीक है Now, out of these ten mandalas, only mandalas second to seventh are considered to be part of the original work. The rest were probably added later on. Okay? And how do we know that they were probably added later on? Because of the changes in the language that are visible in mandalas first, eighth, ninth, and tenth. ठीक है नाउ इफ यू कंपेयर द इंग्लिश ऑफ टूडेज पीरियड विद द इंग्लिश ऑफ शेक्सपीरियस शेक्सपियर्स पीरियड आर दे गोइंग टू बी द सेम नहीं होगा देर आर गोइंग टू बी ऑब्वियस डिफरेंसेस सो दीज आर द काइंड्स ऑफ डिफरेंसेस व्हिच पेलियोग्राफिस हैव बीन एबल टू आइडेंटिफाई ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दैट ये वाले जो पोर्शन है दीज आर दर्लीएस्ट द लेटर्स वर एडेड लेटर दर्स वर एडेड लेटर राइट नाउ The Rig Ved is essentially a collection of hymns, mantras, right? And how many hymns? One thousand twenty-eight hymns, known as Chuktas, subdivided into ten thousand four hundred and sixty-six verses, known as shlokas. The original work consisted of one zero one seven shuktas. The later eleven were added later. They are called Khilatilya. So Khilatilya, what is in the context of the Rig Ved? These are the verses which were, or sorry, the shlokas which were added later to the Rig Ved. The suktas which were added later to the Rig Ved. Right. Now. What is the Rig Vedic Samhita? It is a collection of hymns dedicated to various gods and goddesses. Right now, the Rig Ved also gives a certain important details about the Aryans and their identity. According to the seventh mandala, the Aryans settled in the Indus Valley region and struggled with the non-Aryans. This episode is later also repeated in a story known as the Das Rajan Yud, the Battle of the Ten Kings. Right? This is the retelling of a great battle which is supposed to have taken on the banks of which river? The river Ravi. But the name for Ravi used back then was different. क्या बोलते थे इसको? Parushini. How many tribes were fighting? Ten है Battle of the Ten Kings, right? So ten kings had united to fight one common enemy, right? Hero अपना कौन है? The Bharat tribe, led by their king Sudas, assisted by a particular sage Vashisht, and villain. Who is these five Aryan and five 
नॉन आर्यन ट्राइब असिस्टेड बाय सेज विश्वामित्र व्हाट वाज द आउटकम कौन जीता हीरो या विलन ऑब्वियसली हीरो ही जीतेगा राइट एंड द भरताज इमर्ज विक्टोरियस दे द डिफीटेड ट्राइब्स वर रेलिगेटेड टू अ लोअर सोशल स्टेटस एंड एनस्लेव्ड ठीक है दे वर कॉल्ड दासाज दस्यूज एंड पनीज ना दिस नॉम एन क्लेचर वॉज यूज फॉर सेकेंड रेट और सेकेंड क्लास सिटीजेंस इन दी रिग वेद राइट दासाज वर दोज पीपल who earlier belonged to non aryan tribes were defeated and enslaved thus used those who belonged to the five aryan tribes they were defeated and enslaved and uh, later another category of people started to be enslaved known as panis who were they the cattle thieves right now although we don't find any evidence of untouchability during the vedic period but probably this kind of differentiation became the basis for untouchability later on so what do we find over here the roots of social exclusion and the ideological justification for this kind of social exclusion as well what was that that these were defeated people who had rebelled against the aryans and that is why it is justified to discriminate against them is this clear samajh aaya hai itna theek hai next we have to talk about the geographical context isko ab kal ki class mein discuss karenge विश्वामित्र क्या हुआ स्पेलिंग मिस्टेक हो गया अच्छा ठीक है अच्छा ये बताओ एनी डाउट नहीं एनी सजेशंस हाँ बताओ पढ़ लेना चाहिए आपको बिल्कुल पढ़ लेना चाहिए बिकॉज सी हो सकता है कि इसमें कुछ मिस्टेक्स हो मैं कोई भगवान तो हूँ नहीं राइट right? एंड मैंने बनाए ये नोट मे बी देर इज सम मिस्टेक सो यू माइट बी एबल टू करेक्ट दो मिस्टेक्स एनसीआर टी पढ़ के सेकेंड एनसीआर टी पढ़ने के लिए एनसीआर टी पढ़ने का आपको ये फायदा और होगा दैट ऑन मेनी ओकेजन यू विल फाइंड क्वेश्चन दैट आर डायरेक्टली लिफ्टेड फ्रॉम दी एनसीआर टी एन सी आर टी टू दी पेपर जैसे कि अब जो मैप बेस्ड क्वेश्चन हो गए फॉर एग्जाम्पल यहाँ पे आपको कोई मैप वगैरह नहीं मिलेगा कोई डायग्राम नहीं मिलेगा देन स्पेशल अटेंशन मस्ट बी गिवेन to the glossary terms jo ki ncert is mein mentioned hai special attention also must be given to the boxes which are present in the ncert is wahan se bhi questions kabhi kabhar directly utha lete hai upsc to pad aapko zarur lena chahiye time nahi hai to then that, that is a different matter ncert is nayi wali nayi wali ha ha ab chahe tamil nadu ki padhna chahte ho to tamil nadu ki padho but i would suggest ki jo proper ncrts hain wo padhiyega kyunki wahan se questions aane ki probability sabse zyada hoti hai lekin if you have already referred to a particular work don't need to deviate from that tamil nadu mein bhi tamil nadu ki jo state book hai usme bhi bahut achhi information di hui hai agar already wo pad chuke ho to dusra material padhne ki zarurat nahi hai just revise that again and again theek hai otherwise 11 12th wali ncrt Uh, अब देखो क्वेश्चंस तो डायरेक्टली क्लास सिक्स के एनसीईआरटी से भी उठा के यूपीएससी पूछ रहा है बट इट इज गोइंग टू बी अ मैटर ऑफ टाइम नाउ क्योंकि नाउ यू विल हैव टू जुडिशियसली डिवाइड योर टाइम बहुत ज्यादा टाइम बचा नहीं हुआ है थोड़ा देख करके चलना पड़ेगा ऐसा ना हो कि हिस्ट्री के एक सवाल के लिए यू मिस फाइव क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम सम अदर टॉपिक राइट देख लीजिए मेक अ कॉस्ट बेनिफिट अनालिसिस क्या लगता है आपको हाँ ये क्वेश्चन के थ्रू भी अपन उसकी डिस्कस कर सकते हैं इससे क्वेश्चंस बहुत सारे थे 
प्रीवियस ईयर्स के क्वेश्चन तो है ही बट लुक प्रीवियस ईयर्स क्वेश्चन का जो कॉर्पस है दैट इज नॉट सफिशियंट टू कवर द एंटायर टॉपिक कई सारा इन्फॉर्मेशन ऐसा होता है जो हमारे नोट्स में ही मिलेगा लेकिन आपको क्वेश्चन में प्रॉबेबली ना मिले राइट तो दैट इज वाई हर साल यूपीएससी नया नया क्वेश्चन बना के पूछ रहा है ना अगर केवल पुराने क्वेश्चन पढ़ के जाते हो तो, तो नहीं हो पाएगा बट हाँ क्वेश्चन को आप पढ़ना जरूर उनको प्रीवियस ईयर्स क्वेश्चन को टैकल जरूर करने की कोशिश करना तो दिस विल गिव यू एन इंडिकेशन ऑफ द काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन टू एक्सपेक्ट इन द कमिंग ईयर एंटिसिपेट प्रॉब्ली नहीं कर पाओगे कि इस टॉपिक से आएगा इस टॉपिक से आएगा लेकिन किस तरह की इंफॉर्मेशन को आपको ऑब्जॉर्व करना है किस तरह से अपने मटीरियल को पढ़ना है दैट यू कैन लर्न ठीक है तो दैट इज इट फ्रॉम माई साइड आप अपनी साइड से बताओ अब चले छुट्टी चलिए देन शब्बा खैर गुड नाइट